Okay. Good evening. It is now 7 o'clock. And I will now um, open the March 10th session of the Wellfleet Board of Selectmen at the Council on Aging. We'll begin, as usual, with our um, opening comments or um, announcements. And remember that they have to be brief and they cannot be deliberated. So are there any announcements or comments um, from the board? Here. I have one quick announcement. Yeah, this is a little unusual, but it's an announcement and a request. People are letting their dogs defecate on town property on Main Street, around the marina, and they're not picking up. You the request is, the mic, please yeah. do that. Please pick up after your dogs. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and oh, I sure. have an uh, announcement that I wanted to mention for uh, Manny Smith, who's usually in charge of the um, uh, insert into the tax bill about getting financial help to pay your Wellfleet property taxes. He did not get it in on time to go out with the tax bill. So um, please know that if you have in the past needed financial help, or if you feel you do, that there's that it will be available. And if you like to donate to that, that too is still available. We'll have the announcements at town meeting and they'll be at town hall too when they get printed. And where's Kathleen? Kathleen right here, Madam answer. Chair, thank you. Um, good evening, Wellfleet. Our town clerk, Jennifer Congel, is seeking uh, registers to work at the town meeting, checking in voters. There are two positions available, one for a Republican, one for a Democrat, um, and you should be a registered Wellfleet voter. Uh, benefits include, but are not limited to, first pick of the donuts. Um, <laughs> Please see Ms. Conjol in the first floor town clerk's office. Thank you. All right, so um, I'm going to introduce the, um, are you still acting secretary? Uh, commissioner. Commissioner, all full. Good, thank you, I'm glad, I'm glad, congratulations. So I'd like to introduce Commissioner <laughs> Jim Montgomery, who is uh, of the DCR, and we have people from the DOT, and I am actually gonna just turn the meeting over to Representative Peake, and also Senator Sear will be here momentarily. And you'll, as you see, you'll see the uh, new plan. Is this mic on? Yes, it yes, is. Yes, it is, good. Hi, everybody, good evening. I'm Sarah Peake. For the two people in the room I don't know, I'll introduce myself. Um, while we're waiting for Julian to get here, let me just give you a little brief update on where the state is relative to COVID-19. As probably most of you are aware, this afternoon the governor held a press conference and declared a state of, was a state of emergency. And that is something that our neighboring states have done. It's an important tool that we have in our toolbox. Um, it allows any number of things from using the National Guard to setting us up to receive federal funding as federal funding might become available and I think it was a very wise decision on his part. Part of his recommendation also was to, um, uh, for members of the executive branch, i.e. all of these gentlemen who are sitting here, to uh, telecommute as much as possible and avoid large meetings and gatherings. So we, tonight, they were on their way out of town on the Southeast Expressway as the governor was holding his press conference, so they got out just, literally, just under the wire uh, it's good this wasn't scheduled for tomorrow night because we would have been sending around cancellation emails. So especially in light of that, I, I thank you and the folks from MassDOT for being here and, and joining us tonight here in Wellfleet. Some other things that we're working on, your town administrator and board of selectmen had reached out to me with questions about, you know, nobody has a crystal ball about how long this is going to last, what the course of the um, contagion might be. But as we're thinking about Springtown meetings, Provincetown, I think, kicks it off the first Monday in April. You guys follow soon after that. We have elections coming up, uh, all sorts of things like that. Uh, what do we do about that? As you know, town meeting is important because you town meeting uh, attendees are the legislative branch of town government. And without town meeting, oh, minor little things like budgets can't get passed. So, um, 
Having heard from your town administrator, the town manager in Provincetown, I spoke with my colleague on the Cape, David Vieira, who is, in addition to being a state rep, he's the moderator for the town of Falmouth. And um, I have reached out to the Lieutenant Governor as well as to the Speaker's office. And actually, just before this meeting began, I received a call from the Speaker's Deputy Chief of Staff asking if I would head up a uh, Massachusetts House task force to uh, reach out to members and look at these issues, whether it's around open meeting law, whether uh, members of boards and committees can uh, appear by um, you know, telecommuting in effect, Skyping in or FaceTiming in, um, if uh, quorums are difficult to achieve for uh, boards like zoning boards where there's a presumptive grant of a permit if it's actions not taken within 30 days, what we can do about that, whether there's an extension of time, extension of time between a, f a building permit that also has a 30-day period before there's a presumption of the building permit being granted. I don't anticipate we're going to need any of these things, but I think that now, while everybody still has a cool head, now is the time to lay the groundwork, make any legislative changes that we have to for this particular circumstance at this particular time. So, um, and both the Senate President and the Speaker have been communicating freely with members of the legislature sort of about the status of, you know, how many in infections we have, what we're doing. The State House is still an open building, open to the public. All of you are welcome to come and visit. Although I will tell you honestly, lots of the um, events we have and the lobby days uh, for various interests and causes have been canceled or, or postponed. So that's kind of where we stand on that. Uh, at the moment. I was just giving a brief up Perfect, update on, on the COVID-19. So um, getting to our meeting at hand today, uh, I want to thank you all for being here and welcome you here. I want to especially thank um, Commissioner Montgomery for coming down, he and his team, and I want to thank the folks from MassDOT who, who are here as well uh, several months ago, uh, back actually in late 2019, the Senator and I reached out to both, both MassDOT and DCR and said, hey, can we have a meeting with you? Because we're hearing a lot of concern coming out of Wellfleet from your elected officials and from your citizens. And we want to, um, let's talk about what some of the issues are. And I have to say, in my experience working in state government and serving as your elected official, I have never been more impressed by the ability of these two agencies to work together, to communicate open and freely with each other, to listen to the senator and myself uh, and our suggestions, one of which was have an additional public meeting, and here we are tonight, and come together to coordinate schedules, to coordinate efforts, to coordinate design, because if there's one thing I heard coming out of Wellfleet is we don't want to, quote unquote, dump people out onto Route 6. So there are several ways that they have addressed that issue and I think have, have a great plan. So quote unquote, people will not be dumped out onto Route 6. In my view, doing nothing is not an answer. We have a ghost bike on Route 6 now because a kid dumped himself out onto Route 6. So no plan is not a plan. So I congratulate these two state agencies for all of their hard work and bringing forward to you tonight the ideas they have. They're here with their pieces of paper, their sharpened pencils, their pens filled with ink. So, uh, you know, this isn't at 100% of design yet, uh, but I think that great strides have been made since the last time all of you were in town. So thank you for your hard work and thank you to the members of the public for your input that's helping to make this a better and better plan. Hi. Good evening, Julian's here. Uh, it's great to be uh, here with all of you. Um, and thank you to Sarah. Um, you, you, Sarah, I mean, Sarah covered it, uh, whether we Sorry. are talking about, no, I love this. I got here first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, on COVID-19, this is the swiftly moving issue. Um, we're actually going to be caucusing tomorrow uh, in, in, in the Senate on this issue, uh, and hopefully more guidance is coming. I think the most important thing we can do um, is be very consistent about the information that we're providing. Um, you know, risk communication really matters in these situations. Um, 
and so more to come there. Uh, and then just really grateful for uh, the collaborative effort here. Um, we've heard a lot about this issue and a lot of concern around um, how, how, how really you're going to hear tonight there's really three projects that we're talking about um, that are going to be moving forward or proposed to move forward in Wellfleet over the next several years. Um, there's a, a long-standing planned resurfacing of the entire uh, length of Route 6. I think the last time that happened, I actually remember it because I was like an elementary school student. It was very exciting and like sexy to see like road work happen in Toro and Wellfleet. Um, so we're getting that. Uh, so that's coming. Um, the second project is the actual, uh, a, a more of a complete street project. Um, from uh, basically the fire station to Cove Road. Um, there was an initial proposal brought uh, before the community that folks, I think, was heard loud and clear that folks didn't like. Um, and so that proposal, MassDOT went back to the drawing board. And so that's the second project. These are two MassDOT projects. And the third project is the DCR project, uh, continuing the rail trail. Um, and, you know, both Representative Peake and I sort of have worked hard with our partners, with Commissioner Montgomery, with our partners both at MassDOT and DCR, um, to try to align these projects as best that we can um, to make sure that from a state resource perspective, resources are coming to the community um, in a way that uh, makes sense, that they're happening in tandem, and that specifically we're addressing a number of safety concerns. Uh, and then there's a number of other pieces here that we, you know, are, are not, you know, regardless of the, sort of the projects before us, um, Tonight, there's sort of the longer term conversation about um, how do we sort of complete, uh, complete the Outer Cape Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan um, through, well, you know, through Wellfleet and then through Truro uh, into Provincetown. Um, I don't think we can get to sort of all of that sort of tonight, uh, but you have our ongoing commitment to continue to work on that plan uh, involving, um, yes, state agencies, of course, our, our, our local municipalities, and then a partnership with the National Seashore. Um, so I won't belabor any points. Uh, I think Sarah covered them well. Uh, just thank you all for being here, and I think we're really looking forward to hearing um, community feedback on what's being proposed. Good evening. I'm Jim Montgomery, the Commissioner of the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. Oh, thank you. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here this evening. Uh, I want to thank the residents of Wellfleet, the select board, for uh, having us all here, both DCR and Mass DOT, to discuss this project. Uh, DCR is tasked with protecting, promoting, and enhancing our natural, cultural, and historic resources for residents and visitors here in the Commonwealth. This means we uniquely have a dual role to conserve the natural resources and to provide ways for all to enjoy those resources. Uh, we. We steward DCR nearly 500,000 acres of parkland, which includes the Cape Cod Rail Trail and our newly acquired Wellfleet Hollow State Campground. Uh, as you know, DCR is working to extend the popular Cape Cod Rail Trail in Wellfleet by two miles. Uh, the trail will extend from LeCount Hollow Road to a new trailhead terminus and parking lot at Route 6. The project is 90% designed, fully permitted, and will be moving forward to bid in the coming months. Simultaneously, our partners at MassDOT are planning roadway corridor improvements to Route 6 in Wellfleet. In response to community concerns, DCR and MassDOT have collaborated to provide new and improved pedestrian and cyclist accommodations and to coordinate construction phases to address public safety concerns. The intergovernmental partnership, like the one between DCR, MassDOT, and the town of Wellfleet, share, will help foster collaboration to make transportation corridor improvements. I'd like to thank your legislative delegation who have been strong advocates on behalf of your community. Their direction, support, helped develop the collaborative approach to this project, and I want to thank Representative Peak and Senator Sear. Your attendance this evening and your continued attention to these projects will allow DCR and MassDOT and the town to op the opportunity to complete these critical multimodal transportation and recreational opportunities. The agenda this evening, we're going to have opening remarks and project introductions. Cape Cod Rail Trail Extension and Coordination with MassDOT, Route 6 Improvements, Project Sequencing and Schedule, Next Steps, and then there'll be an opportunity at the end for questions. Uh, thank you again for being here. Uh, I'd like to introduce the dedicated DCR and MassDOT and Stantec team who have made this possible. Uh, to my left are Nick Gove, Deputy Commissioner at DCR, Patrice Kish, Chief Engineer at DCR, Tom Courier from MassDOT, Andy Paul from MassDOT, 
And we're also joined by Jill McLaughlin from Stantec. So I'm going to hand it over to Nick at this time. Good evening. Thanks for having us again. So I'm going to start off with just going over the new proposed Cape Cod Rail Trail extension. Some of you have probably seen this before. Uh, as the commissioner mentioned, uh, it'll begin at Lacan Hollow Road and end uh, at a new terminus at Route 6. There'll be a parking lot at that location eventually. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Path will be a 10-foot wide path, um, two-foot shoulders, be fully ADA compliant. Um, max grades will be around 5% fully accessible, uh, and as I mentioned, uh, there'll be the new parking lot at the terminus. So here, and I think we, we have a shot of this over on one of the boards as well, um, this is the basically revised parking lot uh, terminus um, that we've come up with. Um, so again, uh, it's going to include approach signage. That was one, that was some of the comments we heard back that was important. Uh, bike racks, um, bike repair station, uh, crosswalks, and then a safe connection uh, to the Route 6 uh, sidewalk. I think you'll, if you note, if you look in the top right corner, we've also redesigned the terminus of the path uh, to basically clearly communicate people that the trail is ending, um, you know, Encouraging them to, you know, get off the cycles, uh, uh, walk walk them across to what will then be the pedestrian corridor on um, on Route Six. Um, as you'll hear more about later, this this will not open until these um, new bike and ped accommodations are constructed on Route Six. So this will be a late phase of the work that we're looking to do. That, I'm going to hand it over to Andy. Sure. So uh, what we heard uh, loud and clear from um, folks here in Wellfleet as well as your uh, elected officials was that uh, the coordination between DCR and MassDOT's projects was vital to the success and the public safety of the folks who are using this. Um, this pavement preservation contract is something new that we're describing here today. It's but it has been something that's been in our plans for a while. It's a pretty typical uh, process that we have here at, at, at the Department of Transportation where we look at existing roadway conditions and needs throughout the state, and so I, Wellfleet was identified as a location that needed to be resurfaced. It goes from the town line to town line from East Ham uh, all the way up to Truro. Uh, the primary purpose is pavement preservation. Preservation is in there because it's uh, a key to making sure that the roadway is preserved. We have to do this treatment where we go in and we mill out two inches of pavement and put back two inches of pavement uh, so that the substructure of the roadway doesn't continue to deteriorate. Um, some sidewalk construction and restriping of the corridor to add bike lanes similar to what you might have uh, seen in Truro along Route 6. And then it includes ADA, uh, Nick had mentioned ADA. A ADA is the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's a federal requirement. Every Anytime we're using federal funds, we need to meet uh, those standards. Um, uh, Zach Wiener from uh, my office is here. He's the statewide ADA coordinator and works on uh, accessibility issues throughout the state and is helping us with this project as well. Um, but the upgrades will include improvements at uh, LeCount Hollow Road, Marconi Beach access, as well as the Wellfleet East Ham town line. Tonight will not be the only opportunity where you will be able to hear about this project. We'll be returning, and I'll, I'll go over some of the schedule on it. Uh, the cross section, though, is shown on the bottom left of this slide, and is also um, we'll we'll have all of these slides available um, or be distributed to the town and available on their website. Um, but we'll have buffered bike lanes, which is just a five-foot bike lane. Uh, with uh, striping markings uh, as a buffer between the travel lanes and then in some areas uh, we'll add sidewalk and so the, the bike lanes will just be striped without a buffer. Um, in addition to that, we have the Route 6 at Main Street project, which we've um, talked with folks about and I believe is a better project based off of the feedback that we've gotten from the community. Uh, you challenged us to look at the lane configuration at the intersection um, to avoid some of the speeding that was happening in the corridor. We've gone back with our uh, with the consultant Stantec to revise that design 
Uh, we'll have some uh, images of that, but uh, it's also on the role plan that's on the wall. Um, and happy to answer any questions about that. Uh, but that will include bicycle and pedestrian accommodations, both at Main Street and along the corridor, and a left turn lane uh, from Route 6 westbound into the pharmacy. Um, the, the sidewalks on Main Street and Route 6 will also be included in that project uh, and eliminates the second Route 6 eastbound and westbound lanes, going from five lanes down to three lanes at the intersection. Uh, this plan here shows the extents and limits of that project as well as the trailhead being proposed for the DCR project. Um, and there's a cross section in the upper left image that's also uh, on the wall over here as well. That'll include uh, sidewalks on both sides. The sidewalk on the east side of the roadway will also have a grass buffer in between Route 6. And along the corridor you'll have uh, two, two travel lanes, one travel lane in each direction with again a buffered bike lane or bike lane throughout the corridor. And that will tie into the project limits where the DCR um, trailhead is being constructed. Uh, so we'll talk further in the project about phasing. Um, so we have phase one sidewalk work is highlighted here with a green circle. Uh, that will go from the DCR trailhead, or sorry, phase two. Phase one, um, which Nick will get into, won't go all the way up to the limits shown on this image. Phase two will go from the uh, the the proposed trailhead and parking lot by DCR all the way up to Cahoon Hollow Road. Phase three will include construction of the uh, parking lot and trailhead. And then what we're referring to as phase four will be all of the limits shown on this image and will be done as part of the Route 6 at Main Street intersection project. So we'll go into those in a little bit more detail, but Nick, if you just want to touch on the coordination between DCR and MassDOT regarding the uh, sidewalk construction, uh, or I'll touch on it first, Nick, and then if you want to add anything sure. to it. But what we heard loud and clear was if there is a trailhead that's constructed, um, how are people going to, who are arriving at the parking lot, be able to cross Route 6? And so shown in the bottom left is a pedestrian, uh, potential traffic treatment for pedestrian crossing along Route 6. This is called a pedestrian hybrid beacon, or a PHB. Sometimes it's referred to as a hawk signal. This has a series of lights that go red when activated by someone wishing to cross the street. Um, it's activated by a push button, similar to what you would see at a normal signalized intersection. Once the pedestrian phase is clear, um, the signal goes back to allowing traffic on Route 6 to move along. Um, so this is something that we're looking to front load in our schedule and tie into uh, the construction of uh, the, the trail and actually in advance of any of the parking lot infrastructure being built here. Uh, the existing conditions along Route 6 uh, are shown in this image are very different than what we're proposing. So you see here clearly marked the bike lanes on Route 6. On the, this is facing uh, north on Route 6. So on the uh, eastbound side of Route 6, you'll have uh, a, a sidewalk that again has that buffered grass space um, adjacent to it and is uh, a little bit wider than a typical sidewalk, but still a construction, uh, concrete uh, construction treatment along that sidewalk, uh, paralleling Route 6. On the far side or left side of the image is an, an additional sidewalk that's a more standard five and a half foot, six foot width, um, not buffered by the grass strip on the, op on the opposite side or west side of Route 6. Uh, this is another rendering just a little bit south of the previous one, again showing bike lanes on Route 6, sidewalk, um, and it, with buffered space adjacent to Route 6. Uh, the cross section mirrors what's in the top left of the roll plan that's taped to the wall over here. Um, I'll step across, uh, before we get into the phasing, I'll step across what that cross section is. So you've got a six foot sidewalk on the um, left side of, oh, no, that's not the button I wanted to see. Um, so uh, on the left side of the image here, uh, is a six-foot sidewalk, then adjacent to that is a five-foot on-road bike lane, uh, similar to what we're doing along the, re the rest of the corridor. Two travel lanes, a five-foot bike lane, this is a five-foot landscape strip, and then a ten-foot walk here. I will hand it over to Nick to talk about project coordination on where and when all of these pieces of the puzzle are going to come together. Thanks, Andy. <coughs> so, phase one, um, we, again, based on the feedback that we heard, 
we went back and we, we looked at basically uh, breaking the uh, extension of the rail trail, rail trail project into two phases. So, so we can make the, what we think is a very important connection to our newly acquired campground. We're proposing uh, in the fall of 20 to start construction um, from Lacan Hollow Road up to uh, Wellfleet Hollow State Campground. Uh, that work would uh, carry into spring of 21 um, and hopefully be completed by next summer. So following DCR's construction of phase one, MassDOT will implement what we're calling phase two, where from town line to town line we'll be implementing a resurfacing project. That resurfacing project will begin in the fall of 2022. So they'll finish spring of... Uh, 2021, uh, I mean, sorry, spring of 2022. So in fall of 2022, we'll come through with our resurfacing project. And that will include the crossing treatment that I showed you with the signal and the crosswalks, as well as some of the sidewalk connections along Route 6. Um, those being the bicycle and pedestrian access uh, to and from the Cape Cod Rail Trail uh, up to um, and this is where we're looking for some feedback from you all tonight is uh, we could go to from the proposed trailhead uh, that will be constructed as part of phase three up to Cahoon Hollow Road or we could try to um, go all the way up to, to Main Street with that pedestrian and bicycle access but still to be determined. So in phase three we would continue what would be the second half of the uh, Cape Cod Rail Trail extension. Here we go from Wellfleet Hollow up to what, what would be the you know new um, trailhead at Route Six. But again, you know we've intentionally left dates off this because we want to make it clear that this work will be phased with the rest of the improvements uh, on the Route Six corridor. And then the final phase, Phase Four, which um, some of you are already familiar with, is the Route Six at Main Street intersection project and Route 6 reconstruction project. That is not slated to start construction until the fall of 2023. Um, and so that will include all the areas shown in yellow here, which do overlap with some of the green. So we're going to try to be prudent with where we're making investments in each one of these phases to not duplicate efforts. The signal that we would put in, we would make sure is installed such that it's outside of the limits of work for uh, phase four. Um, and that. Uh, again, we'll start in the fall of 2023, uh, following or in conjunction with any of the work that's done in phase two. Yeah, so I want to just take one minute and talk about what will be the uh, kind of interim conditions of the lot that we purchased for the site, which will be the future trailhead. Uh, we intend to use this as a contractor staging area um, while the rest of the project kind of catches up. Uh, we're going to fence, fence the area off temporarily. Uh, there'll be a, a gated access for contractor access in and out. We actually intend to use the, uh, the former residence um, as an alternative to a standard construction trailer. Chat, so some of the immediate next steps are to finalize the configuration that we're talking about here, get your all feedback on, the, on what we're proposing um, and then on the, do you want to touch on the Cape Cod Rail Trail Extension Project? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, you know, we're at 90% design, as the commissioner mentioned, but uh, obviously we, you know, we want to hear, we want to hear input on what we've presented tonight. We've presented some fairly significant uh, changes, so we'd like to get some feedback on that before we proceed with finalizing design as well as kind of construction phasing. That'll be advertised in 2020? Yeah. So then the, um, Following that, we've got our pavement preservation project, which we're going to advertise in the fall of 2021. Uh, or actually, sorry, that's, uh, I will correct that. That'll be spring of 2021. So for, con I'm sorry, <laughs> advertise the project for construction in fall of 2021. That is a correct statement. Um, so we'll have a public meeting between now and when that project goes out to construction for you all to hear um, what the project limits are, what the impacts will be, and get your input on um, what we're proposing. Uh, and then finally, the Route 6 at Main Street intersection project will have, we, we're striving to get to a 25% design submission 
that will allow us to then have a 25% design public hearing. Um, and that is not yet scheduled, but the project is scheduled. That The design public hearing is not scheduled, but it's not yet to be advertised until the end of 2022. So um, probably the last of all the events that you see here is the, the design public hearing that will take place. Uh, so with that, I think we've covered all of the phasing as well as um, coordination efforts that we've done. I realize that some of this might be a little bit confusing. Why would you do one part and then come back and do the other? There are a lot of different um, purse strings associated with this. These are federal monies that are inserted into a specific year and have to be spent in those time frames. Um, so we did have to do a little bit of a um, shuffling of the deck, if you will, to make sure that we're fitting things into the appropriate budget sizes. Um, so I realize it might not be the most clear way to do this or the most obvious way to do it, but it is one way that we're proposing to do it. Um, and then the, the, lastly, I think um, we, we want to ensure public safety. That's one of our number one charges. It's, it's um, really what makes me go to work every day. I feel like I am able to have an impact on the safety of, of you all and people in the Commonwealth and throughout the Commonwealth. So, um, if there's something that we're doing that is unsafe, we want to hear from you, and you have given us feedback on um, ways to make these projects safer. So we're here to hear that from you all uh, and welcome the challenge to work cooperatively with you all. So with that, I wanted to thank you, and unless anyone had any closing comments before we open it to questions. No comments. Okay, cool. No questions from us yet. Uh, yes, yeah, so if you want to um, ask a question, you come up to the front. Um, Lectern, and state your name, please. Yes, Michael Fisher, and I appreciate how much work you've done to make this safer and also very convenient. There's a small point. You said that you were going to fence off the entrance to the current sand trail, but there are a lot of people who walk along that trail, and so you'd be blocking off the trail. Is there a way that you can have pedestrian access while the construction is going on? Yeah, that's a that's a great point. Um, and what we were proposing to do is fence the basically the perimeter of the site. Um, but I think we can configure that in a way that will, you know, still still allow the pedestrian use that's occurring without encouraging um, cycle access. So yeah, good feedback. Thank you. So Steve was up there first. Go ahead, Steve. Hello, my name is Steve Oliver. I'd like to thank Senator Sear and oh, no. Representative Peake for putting this all together. Um, first of all, I'd like to ask you a quick question through, through you to them about Main Street. I've heard that you're talking about widening Main Street quite significantly. And are you going to be putting a two-way bike path on Main Street in that section? No, the, um, so there are, in the proposal for the Main Street Route 6 intersection project, uh, there is a proposal to, uh, formalize the two lanes exiting from Main Street, one being a left turn lane onto Route 6, the other being a right turn lane onto Route 6, um, and then add a sidewalk on one side of Main Street. And so What are you doing be, about the bicyclists? Uh, bicyclists <laughs> right now are uh, accommodated via an on-road bike lanes on Main Street, not okay. a two-way. All right, so let me start with my what I'm going to say. Sure. Um, First of all, if you, you have not heard us, okay? Yes. I just want to be clear, what, what these folks are responsible for are state-owned property, so I believe Main Street is owned by the town. Just uh, right. from, the Wicked Oyster Dam. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. So first of all, I don't think you yes. have heard us. We do not want a parking lot on Route 6. No matter what you do at that parking lot, you are not going to make it safe, okay? That's, it's just as simple as that. We cannot have recreational ride, bike riders on Route 6. It is a very dangerous road, okay? Now, this current plan for Main Street, I'm not sure exactly what you're doing there, but I'm very concerned about that. Um, and I think you've demonstrated a clear disregard for human safety and a disrespect for the character of Wellfleet. The very beginning of Main Street from Route 6 is a congested area with no room on either side. Land taking will devalue properties and lost parking will close businesses. Two-way bike paths, if that's what you're doing on one side of the road, do not work when there are many curb cuts 
in close proximity to each other. It's as simple as that. It's so that for obvious a, safety reasons. That isn't okay? what's being proposed well, on Main good, Street. Good, good. We're not doing that. <coughs> Just to clarify. Now, Governor Baker does not like the state imposing its will on municipalities, yet that is exactly what I feel you're doing with us. It is clear from the near unanimous vote at last April's town meeting that residents want a bike path away from the highway so that recreational and inexperienced riders can enjoy their ride without interacting with the highway. Our former police chief, who was an avid cyclist, was and is opposed to a bike lane on Route 6, as well as a former Massachusetts transporta transportation secretary and a former Massachusetts assistant transportation secretary, along with over 1,300 other petition signees. The only way to encourage riders into town is by Long Pond Road, so that they are not engaging Route 6 traffic. At the intersection of Long Pond Road and Main Street, we have existing sidewalks on either side. This is the safest, most economical, and sensible route to take. You have been asked by Senator Sear to work with Wellfleet. Work together with Wellfleet's Bike and Walkways Committee. There is a very good solution out there. Let's build a bike trail we can all be proud of and use in some fashion. Thank you. Um, excuse me, I got recognized. Um, speaking as a citizen, first of all, thank you so much for coming together to be here, and thank you uh, Representative Peake and Senator Sear for working on this. This is what we needed. Better late than never, I'm not complaining. Um, Steve, in a way perhaps different than I would do it, highlighted the fact that the biggest concern has been having a terminus to the rail trail on Route 6. And both agencies are very aware of this. And there are historically one, two, three, four, five, six different plans that have been made with the National Seashore over many years, starting in 1970, to have a bike trail, which is something the National Park does, going somewhere east of Route 6 and west of the ocean. My question, and I have a few more points and then I'll shut up. My question is, have either one of your agencies sat down with the park, let's say, in the last month and looked at these former uh, ideas? The 1987 one is particularly interesting for providing a really good bike trail through this problematic part of Wellfleet which has always been a problem. So my question is, has there been any dialogue recently with the park about this? Because they might be open to this at this point. So um, to, to the park question, I, I sort of anticipated this and actually this afternoon um, met with uh, three members of the park service, the deputy superintendent, um, the planner for the park, uh, and, and really sort of asked that question, you know, because I think I've heard a lot of various alternatives that have been proposed, and as, you know, as someone who I think like many people here knows and loves our towns, right, we, we, we know the trails and, and, and we spend time out there, and I can sort of imagine um, a whole host of various scenarios that may or may not work. Um, and, and what the park told me today in, uncertain, in no uncertain terms is they very much support this document, which is the Outer Cape Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan. It's a final report from 2017. And what it does, um, you know, is, is essentially, there was a whole study that the park actually helped finance to the tune of $300,000 done by the Cape Cod Commission with stakeholders from the town of Wellfleet, Town of Truro, Province Town, of course, East Ham, um, the Cape Cod Commission leading this effort, uh, the park, and they very much support the contents of this plan. Um, that does include a number of uh, alternate bike paths. Um, a good example of this is the investment the park made uh, in, in a new bike path. They resurfaced the bike path at High Head in Truro, um, and then they actually created a new spur between Head of the Meadow um, and Coast Guard Beach in Truro. Uh, so they're supportive of and planning of those sort of additional investments. Um, but they're not, you know, they are just supportive of what's in this document. And in reading this document, what's in this document, you know, is um, 
is largely a root six based spine. Um, you, you know, this isn't something that, and I asked about the state participation in this. Um, DCRs had some participation. MassDOT had a little more limited participation uh, in this, but this was a, a county and town led wide effort um, led by the Cape Cod Commission. And so, you know, I, I sort of went through a number of scenarios that have just kind of been proposed and, and sort of pitched out there um, and, and encourage folks to read the report. Uh, there's a number of alternatives that are explored, um, but they, you know, they told me um, that they believe that, they believe and they support the master plan and the policies that guided the master plan haven't changed. So that, 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 that was sort of the update that I got today. Um, I think there's gonna be future opportunities you know, we, you and I have talked about Ocean View Road, which I think in the next several decades will likely need to be relocated. Um, anytime we have opportunities to, uh, any, anytime we have opportunities to um, better bike access there, I think they're game for, and there's actually a federal funding mechanism that they're able to tap into federal dollars for transportation projects that are not, um, uh, that are not in the park, but sort of benefit um, more broadly. A good example of this is Governor Prince Road in East Ham. Um, but I did not hear from the park today, um, uh, I did not hear from the park an understanding or an appetite for or support of um, alternatives in an immediate fashion. So that's sort of the update from my end um, around the park. But it's unclear to me, and I need this clarification, in that master plan, which was the last one I was counting, yep. does that have a terminus, a rail trail terminus on Route 6? included in it because here's the thing so this has been said in many public yep. meetings putting up a sign and saying this is the end of the trail when you have a clear way to continue on route six does not work bicyclists go wherever they want so the is that is that parking lot in this master plan i'm not familiar with that but actually the proposal that's before um, us tonight is actually not consistent with the master plan the master plan ah. Um, actually has divided bike paths, um, and I believe that there was a lot of feedback in the community that I'd heard about not wanting div a divided bike path, not wanting to encourage, um, uh, uh, basically not wanting to encourage people, trying to discourage as many people as possible from sort of dismounting at the end, at the, at the terminus, and not continuing on further north. And so I think that was feedback that I believe these folks heard and sort of took out. So if you actually look at the master plan itself, um, this is not, uh, this proposal is not sort of entirely consistent with that. From the Park Service's Thank perspective, um, they, they actually believe that they've lived up to their commitment in the master plan. They've either completed or have put financing in place um, a number of the proposals that are in the master plan. Few of them actually relate to Wellfleet. Most of them are in Provincetown and Toro. Okay, I have two more quick points. One is, in my opinion, skip the grass buffers. No GMO seed, no you know uh, highway maintenance. It'll all get driven over and you know completely brown in the summer, and it would be good not to have those grass, buff grass buffers, given that cosmetically they won't be that pretty, and have a little more room for bicyclists in that corridor. In other words, the grass buffers look nice on the image. And I understand why that sidewalk has to be as wide as it is. It was explained to me it's an ADA thing now. Sure. But the grass buffers are just using space that could better be used safer, more safely by bicyclists passing each other and so forth. And I want to say something very gently, which is you remember the whole thing that jump-started this excellent collaboration between the two agencies because the bike path was going forward and we came to the DOT and said the straw has broken the camel's back with the death of miles Tibbets. and there are so many accidents there are so many near accidents at that intersection it's one of the most dangerous intersections in Barnstable County and we came to you and said, we need the light to be fixed and we need the intersection to be fixed. And now it's the fourth thing in this series of phases. And I, I just, I'm just highlighting that. I'm, I'm not trying to reproach you, but I'd like to remind the new commissioner and the rest of you that that is the most dangerous thing going on right now. And it would have been nice to be supplied 
a visual of the little bit that's going to be done turning into Main Street in this PowerPoint, because I have really no idea what you're envisioning except the words. So thank you. Sure. You, you, right. you folks don't have the, 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 the math that's to myself. Um, the map that's on, the, I, I find personally in looking at this project, the map that is on this wall here, that longer map, that sort of conveys the entire proposal. Yep. Uh, basically, the project, I think, gives you the best sense of what's being proposed tonight. Um, my sense is that is uh, too much of a monster to put on a slide that folks probably can't see there. But maybe folks want to go up and, and, and I, I don't want to suggest pandemonium, but um, I find that larger map to be the most um, helpful uh, piece in explaining what's being proposed. Sure, thank you, you can keep that if you want. No, that's fine. <laughs> and I think um, the, with, you know, one of our um, goals is to get uh, feedback on the cross-section and configuration of Route 6 so that we can get to 25% for that intersection project that's programmed in 2023 we can technically advertise that for construction in 2022, um, but tie it into the completion or construction of the of the rail trail, um, and we will optimize what work we get done as part of the resurfacing project. Um, in a in a perfect world, the two funding sources were synced up. Unfortunately, they're not. Um, uh, but if they're ever in the, is in the future, the way to move that up, we certainly would continue to coordinate with DCR, uh, the elected officials, and the community to, to try to do that. So thank you. Sure. I'll let Ryan go. Yeah, hello, uh, my name is Ryan Curley. Um, I have a concern, um, and it's basically, I keep hearing that you've made design changes and you've made it safer, um, but the fundamental feature of the rail trail extension remains the same, which is the terminus at Route 6 at this location. Um, I don't know how many people I've seen hit on bikes along this section of Route 6. It is, you know, too many. I, I, never, I don't want to see anybody else hit there. Um, but you're putting casual, casual bike, you know, bicyclists on a side of the highway that has a large number of curb cuts and has a huge amount of traffic. The spots in the summer between cars for, for cars turning left are very small. So the visibility of cars making a left-hand turn is limited in the first place. And then when they do, they do at speed. It's not like you know somebody's driving five miles an hour making a left-hand turn. No, most of the time they gun it. Um, into all these turns. And I just don't see how this, how the terminus being at this location helps public safety in any, any manner. Yes, along the section of Route 6, it does need improvements. People are going to use that section of Route 6 to ride bikes no matter what. Um, taking their needs into account, that's great. Um, putting additional users into that area is less great. Um, in fact, it's irresponsible. To the individual bike rider, the risk might be reduced, but to the public as a whole, the risk has increased with that many bicyclists coming on at that location. I've joked with my dad when this first came out um, that the only way to make this section safe is to do an elevated bicycle pathway along there. Unfortunately, it's not much of a joke. Um, the safest side of Route 6 is the other side of the other side. Um, there's fewer curb cuts. Um, there's a gas station that's closed now. Um, some residential, um, residential, you know, driveways. Um, you don't have the businesses that are concentrated on the, the um, west or the east side of Route 6. Um, and I would honestly invite anybody that's designing this to come down here in August and personally ride that this area of Route 6 back and forth, that will represent a small fraction of the number of trips that will be part being done in that area each day. Um, I'll, I'll personally, I'll, I'll accompany you, but I'll walk. 
I will not ride my bike on this area. I never, I, even when I was a teenager, no, I did not ride my bike on this area. I would dismount along Route 6, walk it along Route 6 to Pine Point, and then take Uncle Tim's Bridge across because it is just like madness. I mean, I've had cousins hit on Route 6. I've had friends hit. I've had employees hit. Um, and it just, you know, it, it just seems like this is, I know that you've kind of committed at this point with the purchase of the lots um, from Amsler, but I do not see how this can be justified in the name of the public good. Um, the bike committee does have, a, does have has, has proposed um, what I see as, as a possible route. Um, maybe it hasn't been explored. Um, you know, I don't see anything that says, oh, we've evaluated these other options as part of our redesign. All I see is, nope, that, that's going to be a parking lot there. You know, maybe we'll put up signs. Oh, somehow the bicyclists are not going to exit the parking lot and magically disappear and turn around. Um, you know, having more bicyclists into the center of town, yeah, that's great. Um, but I just don't see putting that much bicyclist traffic onto this. It's only this narrow strip of Route 6 that's the issue. The rest of it, yeah, fine, you know. Um, there's plenty of space on, on other areas of Route 6, but this one, it's like half a mile strip is incredibly dangerous. Um, and, you know, I, I mean, it got to the point where, you know, I would hear, you'd hear the brakes every day, um, screeching brakes. And, um, you know, you just, you know, you tried to keep your, your head down so you didn't notice it. Um, and then you'd only look up when, um, when you hear it a bang. Um, and that was like, you know, a couple times a week, I would say. Um, I, I've personally had an employee um, who was um, hit at this location. Um, one of my other employees saw, this, saw the bicyclist get hit. Um, and she took off. Her, her sandals went flying. Like, it, and, um, you know, the employee that was hit was literally on the yellow line on R Route 6. Um, very low visibility at that point because she's on the ground on a bike. Um, had already been hit. She was out of it. She had a concussion. Um, she also broke her arm. Um, and it's just, you know, insane to put this much additional flow within this area. That's, that's all I have to say. I must go first. Um, <clears throat> I just like to speak as someone who's also almost been, well, actually been hit in that location by a car that veered off the road ever so slightly. Um, and, you know, I was on the shoulder, um, but, you know, the, the volume of traffic that comes down that area, and then what Ryan said, the left-hand turns coming from cars going southbound and cutting into those egresses are, I mean, it's hundreds of cars. and I, I mean, there is an incredible amount of cars. And n no one disputes that the people who are commuters or who are riding on that highway need a safer path, and they're gonna continue riding on that strip of road. My question is really, um, the path beginning at the terminus of the bike, of the rail trail, it begin the path, the, not the path, the, uh, yeah, the path on the highway, it begins at the terminus of the rail trail, is that correct? Like, that's where it picks up. There is no trail at Dunkin' Donuts. There it's, is, um, so we are proposing, um, I'll go back a couple of slides, to do, um, bike and or ped facilities on both sides of the road. Um, so you can see, actually this is probably a be better image to show here, uh, where, yes, you'd see uh, walk on this side, crosswalk here, and then north of here on both sides of the road. Sure, but the bike path that comes from, that uh, is by that crosswalk right there, here. going northbound, Yep. Um, that starts right there. Yeah, so that will look 
uh, like this image here facing that north direction. Right, and it doesn't go left. Like there's no bike traffic yeah, coming the, in this way. You would ha we'll have uh, on-road uh, bike lanes south of the, the, the trailhead. On-road bike lanes south of the trailhead all the way up South Wellfleet? Yep. Okay, so there'll be a continuous bike lane going that way. All the way through From Wellfleet. South Wellfleet all the yep. way through. And in okay. some sections it'll be buffered. Other okay, sections I just wasn't clear about that. Yep. No, um, and I apologize for that. But the real issue here is what Ryan brought up, and that's the fact that there are thousands of bicyclists using this bike trail recreationally. Families, young children, um, people who have been riding for miles with a sense of security on a, uh, a sort of... Um, path that is in the woods i mean there's no traffic and when they come out of out of that bike trail there may be signs but there's a lot of incentive to continue so if you come out of that bike trail into a pathway and you see pjs down the street to get ice cream or main you know main streets down there and you want to get to the harbor i mean not everyone some people will listen to the signs some people are going to go well there's a bike trail here we're probably going to be safe how much increased traffic can we expect from casual cyclists or inexperienced cyclists that don't get on a bike except for the week they're here for the summer and um, are just put in this incredibly dangerous situation? I mean, if, I don't know if any of you guys have been here and walked that, even walked that strip through all those egresses in the summer. Um, it's, it's incredibly dangerous. I mean, I... I have biked it. I have never biked on that side after I was hit once. I've always biked opposite on that highway, mm -hmm. not because there's no bike lane, but because there's See them. continuous traffic coming and people coming from the opposite side of the road, cutting across into those egresses. And there's one, two, there every 15, 30 feet, there's another egress and they're active. Uh, I think how many 11 egresses in, a, in less than a mile. Um, so, it's so heavily used, I just don't see how you can contain the amount of inexperienced cyclists coming out into that. And even if it's just a 10% increased use yep. of the highway for cycling, um, I think we're going to have serious public safety issues. And I don't see a way around it if you're going that route. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Sure. I don't. Ex I don't pretend to be a no. I think, a, and that's where we took. Expert. We took a step back from the recommendations that were in the the Cape Cod Commissioner report. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Senator. Um, uh, where 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 it recommended that spine of the Cape Cod Rail Trail or extension of that towards uh, the north to be a, a trail. And so we heard from you all that we don't want a trail. And so we designed a sidewalk. Um, shown here in this image that's concrete with joints across it. There's not uh, the same wayfinding uh, that you see along the, the Cape Cod Rail Trail that it very much comes to an end. When you come to that end, there's an area to park your bike or get in and out of your vehicle um, and that you have to cross that entire parking lot and then get to a concrete walk, which looks very different than the trail that you left. We are not going to pretend right. that it's not going to increase the number of people who are walking and biking. So um, that's, that's really the issue. The, it, yep. Like the increased activity of, yep. of casual cyclists in that area. I mean, really, I, I only care about, you know, the, the public safety. And, yep. and I, I am, it makes me very scared about the and, consequences of, of increased casual bicyclists in that stretch of road. Anywhere else in Wellfleet, mm -hmm. I don't think we have the same kind of issue. And um, this is, I mean, if you came in August, yep. you'd understand why no, there's so many people here in this room that sure. think that the, the DCRs, it's not a matter of the, the DCR having a bike path and the DOT making yep. it safer on the highway. It's the convergence of those two things and the most dangerous yep. section of highway um, on the Outer Cape. Yep. Um, so uh, the, I think there's, there was a lot of really great comments in there. Um, in, in other corridors similar to this, um, we've seen where you create facilities for people to use, even though the number of users goes up, 
the safety actually I increases because there's strength in numbers. There's a, there's a, because there are people there and there's a place for them to be, that they're actually safer even though there's more users there. And in some ways, well, that may sound counterintuitive, well, but having a raised sidewalk level where you're turning into a, we're, we're um, reducing the openings of those curb cuts to concentrate where vehicles are entering and exiting from, indicating that there's stop bar indications for people exiting, that they do have to stop before they cross that, that walk as well. Um, that creating that space for people is safer than the absence of that space in itself. I agree with that completely, but are those areas that you're talking about also the trailhead for a major recreational bike path? I mean, that's, that's really the issue. It's not uh, increasing mm -hmm. safety for users and maybe inviting some new users onto that, but a very active recreational bike path converging sure. at a point like this. That's, that's the difference here between just creating a space for people that makes it safer for the riders that are existing. Maybe more wide riders use it because it's there. The recreational bike trail attracts a whole different crowd of cyclists. They're not the type of cyclists that typically would yep. take that ride. Um, there's commuters, there's avid cyclists, and then there's people who come down here onto the Cape in, in our um, tourist economy that don't get on bikes but for a, white, a week, a year, if that, yep. you know? And um, that's, that's who I'm concerned about entering the highway, not sure. the people who ride their bikes on the highway. I mean, yep. we do need to make it safer for those people. So it's the convergence still for me. And I, I just think the incentives are so high for people to continue down the highway when they reach that terminus that a couple signs is not going to really allow them to understand what it's like to actually ride that strip of road and how dangerous it can be. Uh, I'll let yeah. somebody else speak. So I do think the terminus is the main issue and the parking lot. And um, yeah, keep okay. thinking about it. We'll let Sheila go. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, I, I have a, a lot to say since everybody else has a lot to say just too, so bear with yeah. me here. But, let's but I not just repeat. want to, uh, I'm yeah. not repeating a thing really because Thanks. I happen to be one of the few people in this room who happy, happen to support, uh, be, support this, oh, good. Um, this effort. And um, for to answer you know, some questions here about uh, why is it on Route 6 and that it should never be there and you should go back out there and really find that spot you know, I was county commissioner, I was on the Assembly of Delegates, that's a total of 10 years, and uh, going back now 12, um, if you want to tack on extra time, that's gone by. Um, when I started working with the Cape Cod Commission, I remember, and you might remember, Glenn Cannon was heading up the uh, efforts of community engagement because the state really did want the uh, people from the community to go in and start talking like we want to put this trail, you know, extend the trail, we're going to be going by your property, you know, we're trying to mitigate all of these things. And, you know, Wellfleet was a nightmare because they said so we thought you were people, you know, so they would always be coming to me because everybody put a roadblock to every possibility there was. So I appreciate the 10, 12, and probably plus years that have been going into this trying to accommodate everybody's feelings and needs and uh, desires and dislikes. So here it is, it's on Route 6, and uh, you know, this, this looks kind of nice. I mean, I have been uh, out there at seven o'clock in the morning in the summertime, uh, you know, doing our um, Adopt a Highway program from the Community Forum, and um, there is, it's a bad place to walk along. I, there is no buffer, it, there, whatever, is there, you can't see it, the lines are not, the road is crappy uh, to drive on, number one, so it'd be nice to have it paved and get this thing going. To have clearly defined lines is a big thing where you can see where you're going, you can see where there's this line. Also, as a county commissioner, I was coming home one night, and it was in the summertime, and I'm coming by around East Ham, it's about 10 o'clock at night, and all of a sudden, it felt like there was this ghost beside my car, and I look, and here is this young woman, all dressed in black, pedaling along, and I could, and I just said, you know, we have all these students from foreign lands. Uh, not all of them are 
race, you know, professionals on Route 6. They're thrown out there because they have to. And so I made an effort with the county. I, I partnered with the Department of Trans, uh, our regional transportation department. I tried to involve all of the bike uh, committees across the Cape to do education awareness. The people who were involved with J1s took this up. We had police and J1 people come together. I had um, bike safety rules. Uh, we had it in 12 different languages for people because we know that people are here from all kinds of places, all about the safety rules. But it's also the driver needs to know the safety rules. A, a bicycle is a motor vehicle on the road. It's with wheels. It's not a motor vehicle, but it's a vehicle. And everybody has rules to follow. So I really do encourage and, and ask our bike committee to sort of look at this as a proactive um, situation where they can have a direct impact, have bicycle safety awareness days, tell people they have a responsibility as a bicyclist, these are the things you have to do and drivers should be, you know, some drivers, I was in the city, I mean, talk about narrow spaces and craziness, people drive or riding in the city, yes, there's accidents, but there's no more accidents than there are car accidents or pedestrian accidents. So. You, you know, when you're driving in the city, you're going to take a left-hand turn. Well, now a bicyclist is coming up beside you. So if you haven't read these rules and start putting in your mind to actually not just look this way, but to look here when you're making a turn and you think there's a sidewalk here, but there could be a bicyclist coming up while you're making the left, those are things you have to be aware of. So part of it's our responsibility and also for the town. If you go through the town of Brewster, so there's Route 6A, which is the most narrow highway and one of our most beautiful um, highway in Cape Cod, they, that is, they have, they're, they're, they're tiny bike lanes, but they're there. Mm -hmm. And they also have a sidewalk. And I have driven through Brewster in the summertime where people are coming out of JP's or wherever it is, or Kobe's on the other side. And, and to make a point, when there is a mass of people, people go slower and things, slow down and in it when it's not it sounds counterintuitive but everything slows down on route six it's you know you're not going you're not barreling through brewster you know midday but i've seen father come out with the like little chicks behind and then the mother comes from behind and they're and everybody just knows it's happening they slow down they cross whatever but it's it it people will adapt. So a lot of it is up to the education to encourage road safety, to encourage, um, and we could do signage at, at, that, um, at that trailhead. And also, I look at the trailhead as people pulling in to start the trail, not to pour out onto other things. If they do, there could be walking maps, you, there should be, you know, racks there. They can walk to PJs. There'll be a nice sidewalk to go by. It will look pleasant. It's stretch your legs in a different way. There's different ways. We can't just be thinking of the doom and everybody. And I think parents actually understand and will not just let their pet, their kids go pouring out or, or just like crossing without thinking, pressing buttons and that sort of thing. So I think that we are going to be receiving this. In, in many ways, it's a, it's a wonderful gift. I think it's going to enhance our community. I think by going through the state park, it's going to be a very beautiful thing. I, look, I know the foliage that's being uh, planted there. It's going to be an enhancement, and it's up to us to, in, the other, to adapt. But also through Brewster, you can go from 40 to 30 in a heartbeat because you're going through an area and it will say entering congested area. So the town has power here to also have controls over the flow of traffic where you can slow it down when it's coming into the town area and then you can let people go on their way. So that's all I have to say and I want to thank you again for all your work and I look forward to the next several years in, in a nice road and lanes and, and lines I can see at night. Thank, <laughs> so you. thank you. You brought up a lot of good points. I think one, one thing that would help is for people to separate the different sections in, in their mind. So this started, as Helen said, with the lights at Route 6 and Main Street by um, 
whatever it's called now. I call it the vets area, but I guess it's out of Cape Health pharmacy area. Um, that that is that the sidewalk on the north west side is really to accommodate people that may be at this point just to clarify that bend in the road that turn in the road i mean at this point it's going to be a while before you get into main street and sidewalks right like years the do you think? um so the slide here shows um uh, oh. sequencing oh, you got it. okay yeah, i just i just changed it yeah. um so yeah, the the first yeah where it's blue right yeah I just it's uh, got the oval around it I do the action so it comes up so this happens um, earliest in the project phase the the parking lot that's shown on the bottom left is not yet constructed so we're in advance of that parking lot construction building sidewalk and crossings with the lights that I had shown from where the DCR parking lot is proposed up to Cahoon Hollow Road. Then following that, the, the DCR trailhead is constructed, and then from there, phase four is the full roadway reconstruction in addition to the work uh, done at the Main Street intersection. So one of the things the uh, DOT has done is they're going to be cleaning up that whole intersection. And we've talked about this for five to 10 years also about taking, I don't know, don't, don't quote me on it. I'm not gonna say what they're doing, but, um, this, they're simplifying it. They're not going to have the two lanes going into one lane where everybody speeds up. And that's up by the lights. So there is like the bike lanes on the highway, which as they repave, I believe this is happening all over the, all over the state, is that right now the state has funds to repave a lot of roads. And because that, if, if we went back to the other slide, uh, say on the, oh, what I always get, yeah, east side, uh, where there is the sidewalk. Yep. Helen doesn't like the grass buffer, but it's called a buffer because it's a buffer. You don't, if you have a, a buffer, you're not, you're going to be more aware of that. And car, cars are going to be more aware of it. I mean, just having new lines, if you look at the old, what's there presently, there's no lines, there's no delineation, there's no visual um, delineation that would protect cars or even people just walking across the parking lot from Cumberland Farms, you know? So just the new plan cleans it up and the sidewalk cleans it up and it says, here's a sidewalk, this is where you can walk. And I'm gonna guess that many bicyclists go on the sidewalk and get off the road there too, but that's not the point. So there's the bike, lane, the bike lanes on the highway that kind of already are there. They're already up in Truro. And in Truro, they're going 60, you know? They're, they haven't slowed down. We can do things with the permission of the police. We can have a police car at there, especially at the first five years. <laughs> you know, just sitting there. You know, you see a police car right around Dunkin' Donuts or um, where the parking lot would go. And you, you automatically slow down. We can also possibly use the police sign and just say, you know, flashing sign, say, please be aware, new, new traffic flow or something. So there are things we can do. There are signs. Uh, I think somebody wisely said, why not lower the speed limit from... I thought we had made that as a request. Yeah, there I was, think, yeah, that, to go from, yep. is it 40 there or 45? It goes from 45 by the... Um, yeah, it's 45 right now. Yeah, and, and I think yeah. um, there there were a couple things Ryan had mentioned earlier about the cro the roadway crossing uh, kind of speedway effect, yeah. echoed by uh, Michael as well. Where we're not just coming in and putting this in based off of what's there today. That we are reducing right. what's currently a five lane road. You've got the two lanes in each direction. That it will go. We'll lose that through lane. There won't be that. We yeah. heard this from you, that speedway effect, where people use this as an opportunity to pass or pass someone, um, go around someone that's turning. We'll have a left turn lane that goes into Cahoon Hollow Road. Um, so all of those things combine together with um, better delineating the shoulders as places for people to bike, and then the sidewalks themselves create a visual effect where it has a, a traffic calming outcome where speeds are reduced. Yeah, and I, um, I actually like the idea of speed bumps, but I'm the only one who likes them. <laughs> That'll slow them down. It will. Um, so, and then there is the bike trail. So there's, 
you know, so when they talk about changing the, the lights at Main Street and Route 6, the Main Street is, it's not, it's not going to start having, it's not going to be a big bike lane going into town. People are, again, people are already riding their bikes. They're already walking there. We have to make it, sidewalks might be expensive, but uh, there are people walking on Main Street into town and walking from town. I mean, you know, we have to provide safety. There's a saying that, you know, doing nothing is also a liability, is also a danger. So um, I'm going to go off, I guess, for a minute. I was just going to say a few things. You have to th realize the state, ha has the state ever done anything to put its citizens in danger? You know, like, the, no, they don't. The state Careful, is really Janet. safe. I'm, I'm sorry. I love the state. No. In the whole history? Yes. No, uh, in, the, in the whole history, okay, in the whole history, you know. It's a mixed bag, I'd say. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So, all right, I won't go off anymore. Okay, I'm wrong. Stop I'll admit I'm wrong. You, <laughs> tell, yeah, and really, I mean, their whole thing is safety, you know. That's why they have wide lanes. That's why they do a lot of things. So then the bike trail is something different, as we all know. The bike trail is recreational. And if they do it in phases, if they go to um, Duck Pond Road uh, and stop there, which is where, uh, I always forget, what is it, Newcomb Hollow Campground? Yeah, Newcomb Hollow Campground. Is that the yep. name of it? Wellfleet okay. Hollow. Wellfleet Hollow. Wellfleet Sorry. Hollow. Wellfleet Hollow. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Zip it. Zip it. Thank you. Thank you, Ju. I'm so glad to see you again. Yeah. It's great to have you here. Good. You too. Um, so just to try to focus on the difference, and then we can talk about, again, maybe the um, parking lot can have signs. If you could talk about any change in the parking lot that delineates you know, a berm, a curb, bushes, something that makes that parking lot more safe, not just the picture there, but that, you know, a sign saying you are now entering a main highway, even though it's not a really main highway, but it is, you know. Some, something along those lines. So I will stop. But to make it safer, and the town will make it safer, you know. We're not, we're not pushing you out there. Barbara. Hi. Um, first of all, I would like to acknowledge and, and tell you how much I do appreciate um, some of the changes that we see. I, I appreciate that MassDOT and DCR are working no, together yeah. and in the public eye now. I think that's a huge improvement. I also appreciate the phasing of this project. I appreciate that there's a phase one, two, three, four. I feel like it's a, to quote last night's meeting, a little bit of an adaptive management plan. But at the same time, um, and I do appreciate the repaving program and the new lines and the, and the delineated bike lane going around, going along Route 6 from end to end in the town of Wellfleet. I think those are huge improvements and, and I do appreciate those things sincerely. Um, I think we're, where we're concerned and where it falls apart, somebody said that, you know, that doing nothing was not okay. And I get that in a lot of degrees, but, and I do think those parts of phase one are great. And I do love the idea of the bike path being um, extended to the campground. I think it's a perfect uh, idea and I think it's an appropriate idea. I think where it kind of falls apart for all of us is that you've heard about the parking lot, I won't go on about that, and the terminus, but you know, even the pictures here, and this really does look great, but I think the problem is, is there's one truck and two people, and, and, and I don't even mean that sarcastically, I really do believe that that's part of the problem, and you can't really get, except to your, at this overview, that there's curb cut after curb cut after curb cut, and very busy locations and now that we're seeing the reality of that new Cumberland Farms all winter long that is a that is a bigger I mean I'm more alarmed now than I was before and and I see that reality of what happens in East Town already with that Cumberland Farms and I know from my own personal experience when I sometimes am bringing boats from the harbor over to Bay Sales I actually because of traffic coming in and out of the current Cumberland Farms and PJs or whatever, I actually miss the turn to go into Bay Sales because I'm so busy navigating all the other people coming out. And, and I do think that while your idea of this sidewalk, this 10-foot sidewalk is, 
is a nice idea in theory. I think, and I sincerely propose that you do come in August with a video camera and maybe even staging people pulling in and out to see kind of that reality because what I see happening is that that 10 foot wide sidewalk, just like somebody else said, it's five the feet. people are not going to get, um, if families are thinking, they're not gonna get onto Route 6, they're gonna turn that sidewalk into a bike lane. And so now what we're gonna have is bikes going one speed, walkers going another speed, and probably coming from two different directions because they're going to get to that light and make that crossing there. So I think that's a huge hazard for us. And so I really would encourage you to <clears throat> sincerely consider that terminus being at, at the campground. I realize, and this is what I get between the lines. Nobody's told me this, but this is what I feel, is that I feel like the governor and the state wants to say, we have connected this bike path all the way across Cape Cod. I feel like DCR wants to say that. But tonight, before I came to this meeting, my just now turned 11 year old said to me, um, where are you going? And I said, I have a meeting. He goes, another meeting. I said, yeah. <laughs> and so you know how that goes. And he goes, about what? I said, the bike path. And I'm on my way out the door, like almost to my truck. And he said, is that the one on Route 6? I said, yeah. And his first grade teacher's here, and she knows he's a pretty logical thinker. And he said to me, in all sincerity, he goes, I wonder which one of my school friends is going to be the first kid to die. And I, I wonder, in sincerity, when the governor's or the state's desires, DCR's desires, Barnstable County's desires, and even this town's desires, I think you're hearing our desires, but the, the wanting to do something else, when does, that, when does that override what every resident in this room is basically trying to tell all of you? And what my 11-year-old gets instinctively. And sometimes doing nothing or not doing everything you want to do, just like we tell the 11-year-olds, is the appropriate thing to do. And so I just leave you that thought that we have a lot of kids who we all love and adore, and we want you to be successful, we want to be successful, but we need to think a lot before we do this any further. Thank you very much. Thanks, Father. I can. Go ahead, yeah. Ken Kozak, I own 40 and 50 Main Street, so I'd like to talk about the sidewalks. Uh, but before I do, uh, I agree with everyone in here that if we could just find a way not to put people in front of the super combis and PJs, we'd be very happy about that. Uh, but selfishly, I need to talk about Main Street. And my, can you explain to me about these sidewalks? Am I losing my parking lot on 40 and 50 Main Street? Like how much are these sidewalks taking up? There's no sidewalks. The there is uh, there's a sidewalk just at the end of Main Street to the light leading up to the light so it's not continuous into downtown it's, it's on, just on that map is it not yeah. going to yeah. about uh, I don't know, about 500 feet or so yeah it goes uh, to the wicked oyster yep so th that's kind of what I'm talking this about. is as I mentioned we are not even at the 25 percent design stage for this project, uh, the Main Street intersection project. It will go to construction at earliest, the beginning of 2023. Yeah. So what we're trying to get now is feedback um, from well, I guess all. what I'm asking is what are the guidelines for a sidewalk? Sidewalks are a minimum of five and a half feet wide. Okay, so that um, would be taking away my parking lot. There are other ways to construct the road okay. that may or may not impact your walk. And so we put something together, we're proposing it, we want to hear feedback from the community as well as direct abutters on what the impacts will be to their property. Um, and oftentimes uh, hearing from you how folks access 
your parcel and where uh, they're parking on the parcel is really informative to us to understand how we can design the road. Uh, there, there currently is width on Main Street that we are proposing. Uh, someone had asked at the beginning about are there bike lanes on Main Street. In this short section, we are proposing bike lanes on Main Street. It could be the case that um, we seek an exception from our own policies to put bike lanes on Main Street, the Main Street section of here. They don't lead to any bike lanes further down Main Street, and there doesn't seem to be a local plan to do that. So in that case, we could narrow up that cross section on Main Street and perhaps not have as much of an impact uh, to the parcels on that side of Main Street that you're talking about. So those are some of the back and forth that we have um, with the community and with the butters. Um, and this has just been a little bit more complicated because of the, the trailhead and other discussions that have right. not la allowed us to get to that point. With and you. then lastly, can we put a right on red sign from Main Street going on to Route 6? Um, so like as part of the project or no like now I don't want to wait but, three years for that so, so it says I'm I'll sorry let, is it no turn on red or right on right on red allowed that would be nice does it we say have a lot of people from New York and New Jersey they can't uh, go right oh who don't know that it's you are allowed to yeah. go right on red so it gets um, backed up like all the sign. way to the Ooh. Wagner Inn because no one's turning yeah right. um, let me look into that because I don't know um, we don't have to do that in a lot of cases so I'll uh, see what the policies are and we'll work with you on encouraging people to turn right on red right, when thank it's you. safe to do so. <laughs> Hi, my name is Peter Cook. Um, first of all, thank you for coming here so that we can see your plans in an integrated fashion. We realize that they're developed separately but they're being, it looks as though they're going to be executed in a coordinated fashion. We appreciate that. Um, so Wellfleet and the other outer Cape Towns are destinations for a lot of people. And so they have unique character. Our interest, in addition to safety, is to preserve or even enhance that character. Um, so I'm heartened to see the, the uh, illustration you have of the Main Street intersection because it looks as though, at the most, you would have the, the existing two traffic lanes plus a sidewalk. Yep. Okay. And the reason I ask is because on October 8th, I was at a meeting in the town hall that was set up by our town administrator and had DOT representatives in Stantec. And the commercial abutters on Route 6, as they described the initial design of the Route 6 plan, they also showed drawings of the, route, of the Main Street intersection that included, in addition to the existing two lanes, two vehicle service lanes, and then a multi-use path. And I talked to the designers after the meeting, and the width what looked as though it was approximately double the current corridor width for Route 6. So it's encouraging. It sounds as though you're saying that is a preliminary design, and we should not be expecting that those service lanes would go in on, routes on Main Street. Um. Yeah, the, the cross-section on Main Street will stay the same. We'll be resurfacing the roadway. Um, there are geometric changes that are happening at the signal, obviously, reducing sure. it from five lanes. Oh, yeah, and the turn lanes and everything, so, we understand. So, this. and that's where, um, you know, we start with, say, standard widths, and uh, there's uh, the roadway, the lanes and shoulders as well. Mm -hmm. um, so th those are being proposed based off of standards, but certainly there's an opportunity to... Um, work with the community based on the context of the roadway and come up with a solution. That oh, thank you. Yeah, the design that I saw back in October showed those service lanes continuing up as far as the Wicked Oyster. And so I wanted to. Sure. I'm glad to hear your comment there. Okay. Um, although, and the plans are presented in an integrated fashion, which is really valuable for us, but we understand they, they're really servicing different objectives. The DOT plan is enhancing cycling safety along Route 6, which we agree needs to be enhanced. We need better cycling safety along Route 6. We encourage you to revise or to redo your um, traffic flow studies now that the new Cumberlands is being complete, completed. Mm -hmm. Because just, you know, as locals here, a lot of us think that the traffic flow is going to really change. Um, the other is if you're unfamiliar with Wellfleet in the summertime, as a destination town, the, the roads transform. 
I mean, mm -hmm. especially Route 6, which is the main traffic artery for all the towns going up the Cape, or down the Cape, if you look at it that way. The, um, it's very congested. Um, a significant safety consideration is all those curb cuts in this section from the proposed parking lot to Main Street. Um, it's, it's a hazardous area. Um, if you can make that safe, great. We understand that there's a, there's, there are certain different types of cyclists, and it's your, your avid cyclists who are going to be you know, shooting along Route 6 on the way to P-Town, um, trying to set their personal speed record. There are going to be your commuters, who are you know, summer students who are com you know, students, summer employees who are in town and maybe um, use a bike to get around commuting um, to their jobs. I did that when I was a teenager here. So I, n I understand the, the hazards and the advantages of having a bike in Wellfleet. But there's another set of cyclists in Wellfleet, and that's your recreational cyclists and your families. You know, different abilities, different ages. Um, that group, the DCR plan, um, seems intended to to address more so than the commuters, more so than the speed cyclists down Route Six, and we get that. There is um, concern that obviously and it's been expressed very well and very articulately by others about having those recreational cyclists be confronted with a terminus at Route 6. There may be signs, but the fact is it's a, um, um, a convenient nuisance to have PJs right down the road a few hundred yards and for a family coming off the trail to just say, let's, before we get in the car, let's ride down to PJs. So um, if it's possible to end the DCR trail away from Route 6, there are a couple of advantages. One is you avoid the highway safety issue of having recreational cy cyclists contend with car traffic. And you can put up all the signs you want. That'll stop a certain number, but there are a certain number, as we all know, who will continue. The other advantage is that you have an opportunity at that point to continue the recreational trail further um, toward, the, toward Provincetown. Um, our town bike and walkway committee has examined different alternatives for such a bike trail to continue in a rural setting um, from uh, what DPR is currently intending un until a couple hundred yards short of Route 6 and then detouring and then to continue on to the Truro line. And in a very rural setting, away from road traffic, um, there are different alternatives. I don't want to champion one of them right now, but I will say this past weekend, um, somebody in town here took me out on one of those alternate routes, and it was, um, it was quite something. And there is a lot of local knowledge here. Again, the town's bike and walkway committee has that knowledge. Um, I would encourage DCR to, um, to contact our, our town's committee because there may be some new opportunity there that would benefit not just Wellfleet, but benefit the rest of the Outer Cape in terms of becoming an attraction for recreational cyclists. Thank you. I just want to make a quick suggestion to the DCR, uh, just based on what Peter just said. I don't know if you can bring the slide back that shows the, um, the overall new extension of the DCR path. Um, so it's there. Okay. It's the red. We and can't the blue. really zoom in on that, but I think it's probably close to about I don't know, maybe 500 feet from the highway is Old Kings Highway, which is the road we're on right now. Um, you have to cross Old Kings Highway to get to that little extra area um, that takes you out to Route Six, where the new terminus would be. Um, there's enough room on the end of that section to create a terminus similar to the one that's behind uh, the general store um, that ends at like Count Hollow Road. Um, and I, I just would suggest the DCR consider actually making the terminus at that location 
That way, people who do continue on, they're not continuing on to a situation where there's a conjoining bike trail onto the highway, but they're coming out, there's a terminus there, and then there's a rural road. Um, and, you know, there's no perfect solution, but I think it meets the objective all the way up to about maybe, I, I don't know the exact distance, maybe five, 600 feet, maybe it's 1,000 feet, I'm not sure exactly, but it's not a very long distance from where you're going, but it separates these two projects so you just can eliminate this issue of this juncture of two separate worlds sort of converging in this extremely dangerous area. Um, because, and I don't know if I made it clear, I'm really supportive of the DOT making the highway a safer place to be a pedestrian and a cyclist. The issue that really arises, and it seems like the issue generally, uh, as far as the town goes, the, the really strong held uh, belief that in having this juncture here of, of um, people coming to a trailhead and being like less than a mile from Main Street, um, a f like just down the road from a place to get ice cream and a burger after a long bike ride on a safe trail, that that's really the issue. It's the, it's the sort of juncture of these two worlds meeting in a really sort of dangerous section. And um, I know you've committed to the property. I'm sure the state can figure out you know other things to do with that property. Um, but I, I think it would go a long way in solving the problem um, right there. And it also, that also corresponds with the rest of the power lines and possible alternative routes to continue from that bike trail. Um, and you're not talking about something that's, you know, uh, like it, it's, not, it's not super residential where that comes out. There's no houses right there. You're on the power lines essentially where that, where that terminus would be. So I just, you know, urge the DCR to consider that as an alternative to um, terminating on the highway. I think I'll add that um, on Old King's Highway where the um, power lines come out, uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but that um, Eversource owns that area and doesn't want any... They, no, no, they own, no, the state owns it. The state owns the sandy part. And these bicyclists would have mm. to cross You're Old King's right Highway here. to get, yeah, where the power lines empty out, mm. they own that, it's the railroad bed also. Yeah. Uh, they would, all these cyclists would have to cross Old King's Highway even to get beyond this point. Every single right. cyclist to get to the terminus is going to have to cross Old King's Highway if the terminus is on the highway. This would put the terminus on the other side of Old King's Highway. Uh, rather than going across Old King, King's Highway, that would still be a dirt road or dirt trail or whatever um, that goes. It's a dirt trail, basically, the old railroad so, bread that goes out to Amsler's yeah. from Old yeah. King's okay, Highway. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. To add a fact quickly, a if I may. Right. Yeah, 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 just go quick quickly, fact. Yeah. So power line's not such a good idea for a variety of reasons. Old King's Highway goes all the way to Truro, and it's doable. And I highly suggest that you look at this with the park and you also look at the 97 plan with the park, which they haven't looked at recently. I talked with uh, Superintendent Carlstrom last night. Just a thought, okay? Just a thought. It could work because the park also wants a good bike trail. Kathleen? Um, I, I haven't had a chance to um you know, add comments or ask questions. Um, I want to get back to um, um, a concern with regard to the speed limit. I do believe that when the DOT was here proposing a roundabout for Main Street, um, we discussed in depth at that particular meeting about reducing the speed limit somewhere from the drive-in uh, to where we, you know, to, to the lights on Main Street. Um, so I hope that that would be um, taken into consideration consideration because slowing the traffic down um, is, is going to be critical to uh, maintaining safety. The other thing I want to add, and it's come up and I, I couldn't reply to it, Cumberland Farms, 
the egresses to Cumberland Farms are going to be safer in this new situation than they ever were before. Um, also, they did um, a, a very thorough uh, due diligence traffic study, um, which they had to go through in order to get their permitting. Um, the um, terminus that everybody refers to was never a terminus for me. It was a starting point. People from the Lower Cape could park their car off the highway, get on that rail trail, and go from here to Dennis. I never looked at it as an ending point for us. I looked at it as a starting point. Um, you know, there, there's been work done on this since 1987. Um, we have looked at uh, all sorts of different routes. But I think a lot of people don't realize that in order to create a safe and recreational bike route, it has to be ADA accessible. I'd like to remind everybody about that. Thank you. Janet? Thank you. Um, yes, Justina. Um, yeah, definitely people are working hard um, on the bike walkways trail and are here tonight because they really care. But one thing that strikes me in hearing about the uh, concerns about the terminus is that we're assuming um, that parents are going to be comfortable taking their kids out um, on the uh, highway and assuming that it's going to be a safety hazard and that people aren't afraid of Route 6 and won't do their homework. and. Um, Parents today are pretty protective, and I think um, people who bicycle are safety conscious, and I think we ought to at least keep an open mind. It's a hypothesis that it's going to dump people out on Route 6 and be a nightmare. It's a hypothesis. It's a prediction. It's not going on today. We're not assembled here today because we have a safety problem on the highway. And I like to... <laughs> it's, it's not built yet. Mm -hmm. If my well, and I think that I think that we're going to have to keep an open mind. I'm sure the state has designed bike rail trails in many um, communities and went to school for it and has worked professionally for a long time. So I just hope we can keep an open mind as we work together as a community through the different problems. But not many parents, not many parents I know would would uh, take their kids from the bike trail out onto the highway, and I don't think we have it happening up at uh, LeCount at the other trailhead either. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dana? Thank you. Um, I'm, as someone who believes in good government, I'm not one of these anti-government conservatives, I believe in good government, but I'm very disaffected in, with the state government a state government I took pride in for many years and used to visit the state house because I just loved the whole idea of Massachusetts, the legacy of Massachusetts. The way they want to come in and just are willing to um, sacrifice the character of their town for this illusion of ultimate safety. This and also, could I please see the slide with the sidewalk? If you can get it to me. Sure, I'm pulling it up right now. All right, thank you. All right, Ms. Lyons and Ms. Reinhardt referred to that as beautiful and lovely. Well, I don't think we said beautiful and lovely. Well, I, I think, think we said we, visually it was better. Um, well, okay. in my humble opinion, there's, it's there's other things that are beautiful and lovely, like the ocean, right? Well, okay. in my, all right, I get it, but in yeah. my opinion, it's tacky, and it looks like something out of uh, retail suburbia. Looks like something that would lead to a mall. This is not Boston. This is not Framingham. And as lovely as Brewster is, this is not Brewster. This is Wellfleet. And the character of their town is being compromised by an illusion of safety. And I also would like to know if the proposed trail extension that would go um, by the Old King's Highway, like if it was going to go off the highway, I don't know much about that, but has any study been done about impact on wildlife 
an, an area of critical concern or yeah. pollution or anything? That because was done, Dana. Hmm? It was done. It was done? It was done. Has, um, what, what was the result, please, in a nutshell? It, it came clean. It came clean. So no wildlife would be impact, it ha wouldn't be an impact on wildlife? Okay. All right, thank you. That's all I have to say. I'm totally against this project on every count until you can come up with something that preserves the character of the town. Thank you. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, I'm looking at somebody else. Yeah, go ahead, Sharon. Hi, my name is Sharon Rulager. Um, I live on Cahoon Hollow Road, so I'm quite intimate with this uh, stretch of road. And I'm also an avid cyclist and a big time walker. Um, and I know all about the difficulties of negotiating that strip of road. I, I'm not gonna repeat what a lot of other people have said, but I, I'm in favor of bike paths in general, and I hope we can work this out in a way that everyone likes. But I do feel that, um, and I know it's a state road, and I know people will oppose me on this, perhaps, but I've often thought that if we could take that stretch of road from Cove Road to at least the light at Main Street, maybe to the fire station, and make that a congested area with a very low speed limit, with very high police supervision, Tickets given out right and left the way they've been done, they used to do in East Ham, and really, and maybe perhaps restrict left, turn, left turns in that section and create another way, maybe a jug handle somewhere where people could, you know, make a, make a right her, turn and then get on the highway going the other direction because I think it's the left turns that really create a lot of congestion along that strip of road. And people come out to the middle of the road waiting for their opportunity to turn. And uh, it just is it's mayhem. So that's my Thank you. opinion. Thank you. Thank you. OK. And Mr. Parent. My name is Jerry Parent, chairman of the Wellfleet Planning Board. I'm speaking as a planning board member. This has not come before the planning board. We haven't seen any plans, updated plans, or anything of that nature. I know when DOR was involved with the bike trail, anytime they came out with any plans or updates, they would send those to the planning board, simply their office, so if anybody wanted to see them, they had a place to go in Wellfleet. So I might suggest that in the future, you might consider making that a home base, at least for townspeople to take a look at plans at that office. Um, this is, let's see if I can make this fairly quick. Um, Cumberland Farms. When, if this project goes forward as you have presented it, Cumberland Farms has presently curb cuts that we negotiated with them when they got permitted. Do you plan on changing the width of those curb cuts and narrowing them, or are you leaving them as they were permitted? Um, as permitted, uh, both by the town and by the state. Okay, because um, they were permitted by the state. Yeah, and the, I mean, there will be uh, changes to the, the cross-section of the roadway, so there will be modifications, but where you access to and from the site will remain the same. Um, you know, once you put in the sidewalk, the buffer, and the actual curb radii into and from their site, that doesn't exist today. So we can't leave that the way that it is today. But, uh, but the location of them, the width or opening of them. Um, would remain as the Planning Board and the Board of Appeals yes. permitted? Yep. Okay. At, at this time, you know, subject to change based off of feedback that we're getting. Well, or, let, me, let me discuss that item then. Yeah. East Ham's Cumberland Farms. Mm -hmm. um, as a planning board member, I believe that's a serious egress problem, an entrance problem, uh, especially coming off the traffic light. It's too narrow. Yep. Yep. Consequently, a car almost has to come to a complete stop, and I'm just waiting for the day where there is a tremendous rear-end collision at that point. So that's the reason why we increase those. Um, by increasing them, of course, we did not know that the bike trail was going to be continued with a parking area on Route 6 and the added 
pedestrian and bicycle traffic in that area. Um, I think the improvements you've made and listening to those of us in Wellfleet have been very good. The driving force, and it's been said, is the parking area. We're all helpful that it's a starting point to the bike trail to go towards Orleans and the other end of the Cape. We're hoping it is not an ending point where they all get off and get onto Route 6. But if it goes through, my advice would be, and I think you posed the question, do not end the sidewalks at Cajon Hollow Road. Continue it to the traffic light. Yep. Otherwise, we're going to have a very serious problem between Cajon Hollow Road and the traffic light by the cemetery. So if, in good planning, if this proceeds, my suggestion would be to continue the sidewalk. Yep. Also, if it okay. continues, when you come out of the parking area um, at the bike trail, delete the crosswalk to the other side of the street. The last thing we would like to see as a planning board is anybody, whether they're walking a bike or walking themselves across Route 6, is crossing Route 6 without a traffic light. So there will be, it's so two, two clarifications, there will be a light um, that we are proposing to control access across Route 6. Sorry, while I uh, get to that image. So that would be the typical push button? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there's a push button here, crosswalk, and then these lights overhead. Um, and so they'll have red indications on Route 6 stopping to allow people to cross so during that pedestrian movement. And I don't, mean to t I don't mean to shoot you, but yeah. I don't know how many years we've been trying to get a traffic light at Cove Road and yeah. haven't been able to do it. But so now we're looking at a traffic light only by pedestrian yep. yeah, it would not at that control. point. Okay, that, was, that was not clear. That, okay. that certainly helps that. Based on that, it was brought up earlier, that's approximately, and you've got the distance better than I do, from that point to the next traffic light at Main Street is probably 1,500? Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Okay. My suggestion would strongly be at that point, since they're going to see traffic lights, to get reduced speeds down to about 25 to 30 miles per hour. Sure. You've got a single lane. Mm -hmm. You have them already stopping. Mm -hmm. So rather than coming off that traffic light trying to pick up speed again because a lot of these people are aggravated to hell because they've already been backed up to Bracket Road and East Ham in the summertime, all they want to do is hit the gas. So if, yep. if they hit that first light, they're already slowing down. By the time they hit the second light, they can't really build up to speed if that speed limit is 30, degree, uh, 30 miles per hour. Sure. And there is a police presence just like East Ham. Sure. The other thing I'd like to bring up, and I'll, I'll get through it real quick. Since you're repaving all of Route 6, we have two other traffic lights in the town of Wellfleet that the planning board has been trying to get DOT to make right-hand turns only on into Marconi and into Gross Hill Road. Mm -hmm. And we've been shot down every single time. So what happens at Marconi, if the lane stays the same, and the same happens at Gross Hill Road, is you have double lane, one car in the middle maybe wanting to turn right yeah. to go into Marconi. They double stack. The maximum numbers they can have there is nine. So all of a sudden, you've got 18 cars parked in that area at the traffic light, and they're all coming into a one lane. Yep and there is Old Wharf Road right there, it's dangerous. And the same thing happens at Gross Hill. So yep. if, in fact, we're improving, and you guys are really listening. We may disagree, but you're listening. You're trying. Let's see if we can't clean up some other problems in Route 6 that we have at the same time. It's real simple. Yep. It's simple lining. Sure. No, that's, that's what we're... We, and we've heard that in the past here as well, that there's opportunities as part of this resurfacing project to do those 
striping changes and signal timing changes? I would strengthen the fact that when this project originally started, and I happened to be with Rex Peterson sitting at the Cape Cod Commission when we presented the case for the traffic light at Main Street and Route 6 to the Cape Cod Commission, and DOT had a representative there and said, listen, it's about time we did something for your end of the Cape. It was the traffic light that we were dealing with. Now that the state has come in, bought the campground, it's a plus. We've added to the congestion and the problem with that by bringing the additional parking area to Route 6. Um, it would make more sense to end it at Long Pond, uh, Oak Kings Highway. But it doesn't help solve your problem in planning because then we've got to get them either to Cahoon Hollow Road or we've got to get them by Cahoon Hollow Road down to Long Pond Road. We've tried to negotiate with the National Seashore in the past. That's like talking to a stone wall. Right. You don't talk to the National Seashore, they talk to you. Right. So with the idea, and no offense to anybody in this room, the ideal situation probably is to take the bike trail through the National Seashore. That is ideal. But the state of Massachusetts has no authority over a federal jurisdiction, the government, or jurisdiction over the government of this country. They are not going to relinquish what they've already done. Right. They're not going to give up any land. They're not going to make it any easier for Wellfleet to make it right. They've got their plan. That's what they're going to follow. We may have some spur roads or bike trails off of in the National Seashore in the future. Great. But they're not going to give that up. We can't even get land that we own back from the seashore. So I think that we, we need to make this program the best program that we possibly can to meet as many needs as we can because the seashore isn't going to bail us out. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. And um, so just to cor uh, correct one, one thing or clarify one point is that um, as part of the full intersection reconstruction project at Main Street at Route 6, we are going to extend the walk up to the Main Street intersection, um, that it won't end at Cahoon Hollow, uh, that it will continue past Cahoon Hollow. Hi, my name is Barb Taylor. People tonight have talked a lot about the 10 foot wide sidewalk and the parking lot and their connection. It appears to me that the reason you have a 10 foot wide sidewalk there rather than a six foot wide sidewalk as you have on the other side of Route 6 is so that it acts as a two way multi use bike path. Is that not correct? It's to allow for um, more demand than a six-foot sidewalk would accommodate. But is it not uh, going to be not going basically to be, be a two-directional multi-use path? No, if we were designing this as a two-dimensional multi-use path, uh, um, just to go to the renderings that are shown here, uh, this walk here would be all asphalt. There would be a double, there would be a striped yellow line down the center of it. And there would be signage and wayfinding to encourage people to bike along this. In addition to that, we will usually add in details at the driveways um, for control and operations of the, of the multi-use path um, and where it intersects with the driveways. This is intended to be a wide sidewalk and just that and not reflect the standard details that we use on a, a bikeway. I believe that contradicts what was stated at the October of Butters meeting, where this was slated as being basically a multi-use path, which looks like a sidewalk. Since it is labeled a sidewalk, it may change the rules on who has the right of way. So who will have the right of way at a crosswalk? Will it be people who are biking in two directions, or will it be automobiles? The, the right-of-way 
at any uh, crossing is for uh, the pedestrian on the walk um, at every driveway. Will if you're bikers riding a be bike, considered pedestrians because this is labeled a sidewalk? Will bicyclists be considered pedestrians? Yes. No, and at, on any, any sidewalk, a bicyclist is not considered a pedestrian. So um, in this case, bicyclists must stop, dismount, and walk their bikes no, across? No, they can continue, they just, they don't, um, they can continue to ride unless this were a, um, a, a central business district. So if this was a da in, say, downtown Wellfleet, um, they, they would not be allowed to, say, use the sidewalk. Here, they're riding a bike as if they were riding a bike in the road. They're just riding the bike on the walk. So they would, they would need to uh, yield to, to traffic that's using it. They would need to... And how is everyone going to know this? Uh, this? This same rules, although... <laughs> hard to uh, interpret and for me to even speak about them right now are uh, what occurs on every sidewalk in Massachusetts. If you're riding a bike on a sidewalk um, that you don't have the same way, right? you don't have the same um, right of way that you would if you were walking. And that's because of the, the physical speed at which you're moving. You're moving faster than someone walking. I find this amazingly confusing and I'm sure that people who come from other parts of the country to vacation yep. here are going to find this immensely confused confusing I have two questions for you one is do you have a time limit on comments and the second is do you have a sheet of your email addresses so that folks here can send you feedback so yes, we do have um, a concluding slide here that has contacts for both the DCR as well as, as MassDOT and the respective project managers for each one of these can projects. Can you leave that up so that people can Sure, and we'll, this will be distributed uh, to the town for them to um, host on, on their websites and will be distributed. And is well. there a it'll time limit on the on comments? Mass, on, on DCR's website as well. Yep, so it'll be on mass.gov. What did you say? Time limit on comments. On comments? Um, the, so for uh, MassDOT's project, no. We will be coming back out um, for a design public hearing. Um, typically, this is an information, this is a Board of Selectmen's meeting, not our meeting. Um, typically, we, we are open to comments for 30 days um, after a meeting, and I think we would, uh, it would, we would welcome the comments within 30 days. If we receive comments after that, though, we are not, closing the door on open. We're open to comments continuously Thank throughout this process. Thank you. I don't know if you guys have no same period. Okay. So I just want to add that David will be our last uh, speaker because it's after nine o'clock and we still have some more of our meeting to go. So yes, go ahead, David. Thank you. Uh, my name is David Agger. I'm the first, I live in the first residence uh, east of uh, Route 6 on Kuhunalo Road. And I uh, appreciate you all being here, and I appreciate you modifying some of your plans from what you presented before. Generally speaking, I support everything that you've presented except for the terminus or beginning of the bike trail, both for safety and aesthetic reasons. Uh, I'd like a reality check. Given that you're taking notes and you're thinking about what you can modify based on what you've heard tonight, ballpark figure, I'd, I'd like to hold you to it. What percentage chance is it that you're going to change the parking lot from where you've presented it? Is there a 10% chance you might change it, move it? 20, 30, 40, 50, 80% chance? I'd like to hold you to something just for a reality check. If there's zero percent chance that you'll change it, please let us know tonight that Nothing's going to change as far as the terminus. If there is a chance, please be generous and let us know that. The second thing is, several people have asked rhetorically. They've asked a question to make a point, but they didn't give you a chance to answer it. Have you actually, you gentlemen and women who are part of this project, have you been here from June through September, have you been to this section? If you have not, please come, and I encourage you to bring your children 
and your grandchildren, nephews and nieces, maybe even a field trip with kids with bicycles, and ride right where we're talking about. And if you feel comfortable and safe about doing that, okay. I, I'm still against it, but I will be really surprised if you would put your family members in harm's way. Sure. So I'm, um, uh, my parents were born, uh, married in 1971, and they honeymooned in Wellfleet. Um, Mazel tov. <laughs> grazie. And they, um, since then, had 13 children, of which I'm the fifth. And uh, for just about every summer since 1971, we have come here. And two of my siblings uh, have actually uh, decided to live on the Cape uh, and, and live here year-round. And four of my nephews, uh, two, of, two of them were born on uh, Cahoon Hollow Road um, and are your neighbors. <laughs> They've since moved. Um, but so I, I, I do feel personally invested in this project, in the outcomes of this project, and the safety of the people using uh, not just Route 6, but um, all of the roads in, in Wellfleet. Um, and those four boys, those nephews of mine, are cousins to my three children, and I value their life. And um, oftentimes I'm put in this position where I do have relatives throughout the state because I come from a large family, and I try to uh, be objective, that I, I don't try to start the meeting with, look, I know I have someone, a cousin or a sibling or a nephew right down the street, because I try to um, envision how I would do this if I was truly not connected to the community, because I want to hear from the community what your needs are. And, I, and, and personally, I'm, I'm hearing the needs uh, from the community. Um, and, and so it's, it's something that, but I'm also uh, personally in, invested in as well. Um, but I do appreciate that, and I've gone with my kids in many roads in Wellfleet where I, I don't want them to ride a bike, uh, in other parts of town where I, where I would, and I feel safe, and um, I think in, in the, the, the parking lot context and the connection from the trail, um, I, I struggle with it too, where the, the, where you're saying there's a concentration of all these different activities happening at the same time, that's like the that's what we strive for in transportation is to create this connectivity. How can we create this link to the, an asset, one of the greatest assets, public assets that we have in the state, the Cape Cod Rail Trail, to where people are. And people are on Route 6, uh, whether we like it or not, uh, whether they're working or commuting to and from work or connecting into Main Street and downtown uh, Wellfleet. And so... Um, it, it, it's a challenging project, and I don't and and projects plural. <laughs> um, well, thank you for that. Can we just go back real quick? Because sure. I know Janet wants to move on. Yep. What's the percentage possibility that sure. it could be oh, moved? Sorry. Yes, I will so, speak uh, on that. I, I think thank you, though. It's unfair for us to put it in percentages here tonight. We've we've received a lot of feedback, but unfair. I think, I'm me, unfair to you or to us. No, I think unfair to the process, really, because there's there's people here who came out tonight, but there's people who we anticipate are going to comment over the next month, maybe longer, and I think it's it's just it's really not appropriate to put it in a percentage here tonight. I think we need to look at all of the comments we receive, and then make a decision on what's what is the the best path forward. So if you got a hundred if you got ninety percent saying not safe, can't do it then you would consider moving the terminus? It, it, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be here tonight if, if we were just moving blindly ahead without, without feedback. Uh, please, an could you answer the question? I, I don't you, mean to be... Can, no, I, can, I, I just step, can I just step in here for sure, a moment? Sure, sure. These gentlemen, Nick and Andy, uh, you know, I, 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 first of all, I want to say I've been in your shoes. When I worked for the Department of Public Health, I sat in this room and was... Um, Helen remembers. I was berated, um, not actually by the public, by a member of the select board. But um, these gentlemen, um, well-meaning, a well-meaning beration. These gentlemen have been working very hard, very collaboratively. Um, you know, from the moment that they got involved in this process, um, my confidence in what MassDOT and DCR was doing increased dramatically. And I just really want to thank them for their outstanding service, for spending so much time here. Um, 
And that, of course, extends to Commissioner Montgomery and, and, and all the teams that are working here tonight. You know, we are all here because the select board and Representative Peake and I have asked them to be here to get feedback from all of you. You know, it, it, it's, hard to, it's, it's hard to process all this information and give sort of a definitive answer for folks. Um, but I really trust that they're going to be taking this feedback. You folks have given me a lot to think about. Um, you know, and this has been a tough issue because I will be honest, we, I, I have received a lot of constituent correspondence with concern about this project and I have broadly heard from the town being very supportive of this project. And so it's very hard for me to determine where do I want to put my thumb on the scale with a very significant investment in state resources here, right? This is, we're talking about millions of dollars coming to our communities which Sarah and I fight every day to get those dollars here and we like to think that we're doing a good job on that. Um, you know, but I, I think the feedback we've heard tonight is really valuable, um, but this has been a this has been a difficult one to call because there's been, from my perspective, I've heard, if, if I would sort of estimate um, constituent concern, overwhelming concern with the project of what I've heard from constituents, um, and broadly I've heard broad support from the town. Um, and so that is a, that makes it a difficult call. Um, you have my commitment to, con you know, after tonight to think about this, to confer with, you know, a, 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 these agencies at the state level to have you know, to digest this information and take it back. But I just really want to thank these gentlemen for doing some really hard, you know, really good public policy work of taking a lot of the feedback that was given. The projects being presented tonight are a heck of a lot better than what we had um, a while ago, which was essentially, you know, a, a number of diff disparate projects not aligned, creating a number of safety concerns. Um, and there are aspects of this project that, you know, I, I expect there's, you know, the interesting piece here is that, um, a number of the aspects of these projects are going to move forward and are broadly supported, right? And so I think mm -hmm. we've heard some specific feedback around the parking lot, that concern. Um, and we're going to take, you know, I think I expect, I, I, I trust that they will take that back. We will look for further guidance from the select board and from the town here. Um, but I just really want to thank them for what they're doing tonight because this is not easy. Um, Wellfleet is a wonderful, amazing, um, passionate town. Uh, and I think we're doing some good uh, public policy here tonight, although it is, it, it is getting late. And, uh, you know, I, I appreciate the select board has additional work. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for your time. I guess I'm not getting an answer. Not a percentage. Well, you got an answer. It's just, it's just uh, I, not I a percentage. I did not get an answer. Hold on, <laughs> Hold on. I have two questions. So the... Oh, over, I mean, the, the, the town is a select board and made up of, of the various town staff members. Um, I, you know, I, I, we, we have not, I mean, they're your elected officials. They're, I mean, they're, they're yeah. Okay, so I have two quick questions. And they are quick. Or one comment. One, one thing that nobody on the select board has mentioned is that please don't talk. Thank you. The select board in the last 24 hours or a little longer, got dozens of letters about this, 32. short ones. Yes, and I read all of them, and they all basically said, please don't put the terminus on Route 6. That's the first thing I, I wanted to put out there, because you weren't told that. In other words, it was surprising even to me. The second thing is I have a question, which is, when is the MPO, that is to say the Metro Planning Organization, I can never remember what those initials stand for. This is a DOT question. Yep. When are they going to have an agenda item about financing any part of this project if they haven't already? Pam, do you know that? Yeah, maybe you don't know the answer to that. Yep. So the resurfacing pro project is already on the transportation improvement program. Yes. Yeah, the tip. So as shown in the schedule. Yep, and the, and the intersection, the Route 6 at Main Street intersection project is on there as well. So they've both been discussed and presented and approved by the MPO. And the other parts of the project? You uh, don't know yet, maybe? No, th those are all uh, funded. And the, so the, the, the trail itself is funded through DCR, not through the MPO. Right. No, I knew about the trail. Thank you. Yep. yep. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you all very, very much. Sure. Have and a we'll nice drive back. Okay. And we'll leave and the materials here as well. Okay. Oh, that's good. Thank you. And thank you, Sarah P. Yep. Sarah and Julian, thank you very much for your help and support. No blood. Thanks, guys. Nobody died. Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. I like us being all together and cozy. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Do you want us to move back? I know. We really shouldn't. Thank you. I'll see you around. I'll see you around. Thank all these guys. Yeah, I did it in the Vice Chair of the Select Board here. People say stop looking at me like a sick puppy. Sure. Andrew. Paul is the last name. Hey guys, can we do this on Nancy So, uh, Selectmen, I want to remind you that we are continuing a meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll see you again. Oh, yeah, no, it's really the junction, I think. Yeah, I can't, I can't do the get door. organized. All right, you can. I'll close it. Good morning, so I'll move to the or Amish, where I Well, so I think that would be the same size term. This group had no term. 
This all seems weird, doesn't it? It does. It does. Uh, it's sort of unsanctioned um, path. This so, so, so ha has she received this? Are we supposed to read anything? Nope. Nope. Bypass you just direct town meeting or, or town council uh, to issue that. And I will email <laughs> <laughs> a copy tomorrow morning if, right if you guys the agree. You're right down uh, this but no, we don't need to read it or anything. Uh, we just have to decide if that's an appropriate uh, response to direct town council. I don't know whether you, whether you realize it or not. Um, <laughs> there we go. Go straight through the cemetery. <laughs> so, Michael, we'll talk about it. It's a whole uh, <laughs> they just asked me. So. Yeah, okay. Did you get his card or his number? Oh, no. I should take it. His delivery is on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, this whole posture, so demeanor. Yeah. Well, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'll see you again. Oh, yeah, I'll talk to Max. Okay. Yeah. Sure this week, but yeah, oh, it's just it's really bad. Yeah, well, Tanya, so Tanya is really bad. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, they all live in no, you've you probably not meditated. Okay. Yeah. One, one of these days we'll sit there and. It's just rude, rude, and angry. Okay. Thank you. Please do. Please oh, do. Good to see you. Thank you. Uh, and then Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, nailing. Thank you. So, Helen, we're going to resume. That would be really good. Okay. Good luck with the rest of the Where'd Mike go? Thank you. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you. So like, our no next, shaking, uh, do say that again, Kathleen, yeah, what'd you say? So our next uh, item on the agenda is to discuss, deliberate, and take a appropriate action against the open meeting law complaint filed by Judah Hearn on February 19th, 2020. We're Jen, doing this fishing. now. Um, and... Um, do you mind if I take it out of order? I, did, I don't have my agenda right in front of me. We're just going to open up. You want to open it up? Jude's been here since whenever. Okay. <laughs> the Herring River is just going to be, it's opening and closing it. So, yeah. All right. So, we'll do the Herring River. Do you want to uh, make the motion, Helen? Yeah, I do. Um, this happens every year. I move to open the Herring River area. As of sunrise on Tuesday, March 16th, 2020, and to close it at sunset on Monday, August 31st, 2020, as directed by the Mass Division of Marine Fisheries. I have a question, Janet. Okay. Because um, we don't have anything in the packet. Um, where exactly is this? Is it, is it Egg here? Island? Is it? So no, no. when you um, come out from Powers Landing, and you take a right and you go around the beach. So it's down around the corner there. It actually, the delineation is from the flagpole at the Chiquesset Yacht and Country Club across, you'll see a candy striped pole right. on the other side of um, like a Great Island Point. And it's that basin in there. It includes the gut, the inside of the gut. Um, there's a prohibited area line. So it's uh, with, marked by candy striped poles. So it's kind of, um, it's the area before the dike from Chiquesset Yacht and Country Club, more or less. Okay, I've been out there, there before. And is this for wild fishing? This is for wild fishing, commercial only, and um, water quality test came back perfect. Okay, thank you. As our president likes to say. All right, so second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And Straight Courtney, you there. notice I added the word area. Of course. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Okay. So, um, so now we move on to discuss, deliberate, and take appropriate action 
against the open meeting law complaint filed by Judah Hearn on February 19th, 2020, regarding select board executive session minutes from April 2019 to current. Everybody got their information? No. Yes. No, I, I don't have my information. It was handed out. Yeah. Well, handed out just here now? Beforehand, is in a packet. Here, here, this is what it is. Yeah, no, I, I didn't get this. It was emailed to the board and it was in the packet. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. But I don't see any of the typos in here, or did they get fixed? I. That, that you sent to Dan and I this afternoon yeah. for the letter to respond? Yeah. You, you will, you obviously yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. thank you. Mm -hmm. I am so, going to abstain from this because I wasn't at the meeting that the okay. complaint is on, and it's involving something that I had abstained from before, okay. so I might as well. So the motion would be to approve the select board's response to the open meeting law complaint filed by Judah Hearn, and we're directing town council to respond on the board's behalf. That's really what the motion is. It's not really discussing the different issues because there's a number of them, but just to direct town council to respond on the board's behalf. Madam Chair, um, although the Ethics Commission is very clear with me that I'm allowed to act on anything to do with this because my finances are no longer affected. The time in question, um, I was recused for most of it. And I think that what I'm going to do is recuse on this even though legally it's not required and the typos I fixed in no way changed the content. They were just some typos. And it didn't, you know. So what typos are you referring to? To the, to the minutes or to no, previous? To the, to the proposed, but perhaps you guys aren't going to vote on it, letter in response. I, I That you didn't even see it? I got the email. I didn't get a hard copy tonight. Okay, all right. So what so I'm going to do is right. I'm going to go out and join Mike and talk with people about bike paths. <laughs> Can you just close the door? Could you, yeah, could you just close the door? Okay. So really all we're doing is directing or not directing town council to respond on our behalf to her open meeting law complaint. I'm ready to vote. Okay. So here's the motion if somebody wants to read that precisely. No, we're not. Okay. So this is the second time that you haven't actually discussed. You just put Casey Law on it to respond on your behalf. You don't have any sort of exchange. So I are you recognizing the person in the audience? No, yeah. Okay, so no. Okay. Come, to Come to the microphone. Say who you are, what is, and what. Thank you, Janet, for recognizing me. You said back on uh, Don't September stay at present 24th, moment. Present moment. You had said you talking. wouldn't recognize me, so I appreciate that you do now. Thank you. So I drove all the way from New York to talk about this. I wrote a 40-page letter. Thank you for taking two minutes. I think I brought some suggestions to Courtney that have been incorporated and I think it's been for the good, and that is that it's very difficult to know when you've had executive session meetings because they're listed kind of like regular meetings. They're at the back of the packet often, and if time passes before That isn't actually, really relevant to your complaint here in the discussion? I'm talking about the fact that you guys don't treat, okay, if you don't want to talk about the positive things, let's talk about the problems. You continue to think that these executive session meetings are somehow inherently different than open meetings. They're, lo they're not. They're just when you release what happened there. So Courtney, the recording secretary, still has to list public documents. When I asked for these public documents, I was told first it was going to be $200 to find them. You know, then, then okay. the AG weighed back about that, and you do what you do when you don't want to do something, which is you kick it down the road. So 
I'm asking you how it is possible that during the whole HIDLA discussions there are no public documents. So, Madam Chair, yes, you may. the uh, minutes have been amended. We've gone through to uh, correct anything that we found in the minutes where there was a reference to any public document. Uh, for the great majority of the time, the documents were not present at the meeting, but they were referenced during the meeting. The AG so court, ruled on I'm that. I'm sorry, I'm talking right now. Okay, we're well, incorrect, so go on. I am talking, so you need to shut nice. your mouth. Mm -hmm. So Courtney has gone through the minutes and corrected the minutes to reflect the documents that were present at the meeting or the, the documents that were referenced at the meeting. So what we're voting on now is actually the response which has been typed up by town council um, as to whether you uh, wish to approve that as your response from the Board of Selectmen and ask town council to respond on your behalf. Madam yes. Chair, through you. Uh, yeah. I read the response um, and I'm prepared to vote on it. I thought it was uh, uh, well-researched and thoughtful and well-written, and I'm comfortable uh, having it represent the select board's response. So can you tell me what the response is so I can have something to say about it? Because I am It's not talking your about, response. Okay, well, I will say this, that you did an appraisal, correct? The client for that appraisal were the taxpayers of Wellfleet. They were not Dan Hort, a non-taxpayer from Provincetown. When so when I yeah. have a question about the appraisal, and I am a certified appraiser. It's not relevant can, to it this It is, because I have a lot of questions so. about the appraisal and the fact that the lawyer who advised you to sign that day didn't even read the appraisal is a huge concern. Madam the appraiser Chair, did not, not define the, the subject property. Okay, so if you do not answer you, these questions, which I'm simply asking for the list of public documents, which you're now saying there were none, I will go after the appraiser. I will ask the appraisal board, which is in Washington, D.C., and unfortunately subject this person Madam Chair, to a peer review. Uh, so I'm asking for simply what you were looking at when you made these decisions so that I don't have to to do that. There must have been public documents. I asked for the order okay, of taking stop, in November. Stop, I didn't stop. get it. Okay, okay. just I'll, I'll answer okay, a question. It was a two million dollar deal, people. I will answer a it question. It has major implications stop. as okay. comparables. No, if I'm an appraiser, so I'll tell you. If you I will ask the police to remove Oh yeah, yeah, who's that? Our new lieutenant here. Would you like yes. to? Because I just so talked Jude. to the chief. Are you gonna remove me? Jude. Yes or no? Jude, what? at this point, it's not. We're not a, having a meaningful Jude. conversation you're, when you won't tell me this how isn't you're going to your agenda. You're over talking. You're not even letting me answer you. Okay. Do you understand that? You're not even. I'm willing to answer your questions. Stop. Say? Stop. Okay. What does the letter say that Casey Law is going to write to me? Um, so that they are explaining that um, there there is a difference between use and what public records were. And that even if a even if a document is if a document is referenced, it does mean that it, it was used. So that that will be that is so that you're, you're right that way. Madam Chair, so, this isn't on the agenda. We're off well, topic. No, we are supposed to discuss it, and that's why the state has this system set up. I Madam Chair, okay, all wait, of these documents. Do, You've you've got to you've got to slow down and and stop. Okay. The documents are on the town's website for anybody who would like to see them. So I'm all right. I'm Jude. I'm willing to talk to you. I'm willing to talk to you. There is no there is no deception. There is no deception. Okay. I don't know where you're getting that. Then look on so, the website. So there, okay. He did not define what he was appraising. All right, okay. so I'm not the even, client yeah. client is the taxpayer, so I can ask for his work file, and I will. The tax, the client is not Dan Hort. We I don't know where that, that even file, comes from. So we have access yeah. to his work file, and in his work file will be everything that Nancy said to him about, the going on the tour, things that nobody else knows. We deserve to know. 
This is a comparable. It will affect other things. Irrelevant to this conversation. Okay, yeah, I know. I'm letting it go. I, like I said, I'm a certified appraiser. I'm not just talking about someone who doesn't know. I'm telling you, I am subject to all of these very strict requirements, and I do not want to put this appraiser on the spot like this. And unless you listen to the Irrelevant to this conversation, okay. Madam Chair. You do what you okay, need to so do. Okay, so do you want to make the motion, Kathleen and Justina and or? I move to approve the select board's response to the open meeting law complaint filed by Judah Hearn and direct town council to respond on the board's behalf. Second. All in favor? Thank you. For Failed. anyone listening at home, all of these documents are on the town's website. Yes, and there are the appraisals are there in both. I would assume both. Is the original appraisal from Hill to there? Uh, I'd have to look and see whether it is or not. Yeah, I can't find. I I do have it still, but yeah. Okay, thank you guys. Move. Oh, do we have anything else to do? No. We can move to adjourn. Yes. Okay, I move to adjourn. Justina seconds. Second. We're all set. Thank Aye. you.